Right. Landmarks committee meeting for July, excuse me, I'm still behind, September 8th, 2022. Okay, so uh, Jason here, the chair, we're gonna hear the first people uh, and some other people will join us, but let's try and, you know, uh, move along all the applications because it sounds like then at the end of the meeting, a lot of people have to go. So it's all going to be moving things along and how we do that well. So first applicant, why don't you tell us what the, the project address is and what the work that's being reviewed at, uh, the commissioner level for by the LPC, just like as bullet points, if it's not complicated. Um, they have not raised their hand, so I'm not sure oh. if they're here. 329 Greenwich, are you here? Okay, I'll move you over, Angelo. Great. Okay, and I will give you the controls as well, so you can present, but after, let Lucian, I mean, not Lucian, excuse me, Jason speak. Uh, I see, now I can unmute. Okay. So, yes, uh, my camera's not on if anybody wants to see me. I don't know if that's, oh, there we go. Uh, where, there I am, up in the corner there. Okay, so with me is June Acuna. He's a project manager for the project. I'm the uh, architect for the building. Um, we are going through a legalization uh, and new Alt-1 for the building to clean up uh, the uses in the building. And during our work, we found that there was a sidewalk fault that was structurally failing. Um, we, it was worse condition than I think the owners assumed, and we're trying to get from, from L, uh, landmarks, a quick review, an emergency review so that we can go forward to repair the sidewalk. So this application before you now is for the, uh, replacement of the sidewalk. We are required to put in a handicapped ramp as part of the. Uh, upgrade and repairs to the uh, building. Uh, doing that ramp on a relatively narrow building, it's only 25 feet wide. Uh, it's a little tricky be, uh, because of the existing locations of the doors. There's a commercial use on the first floor. There's residential uses on the upper levels. And we need to be able to get you up those 24 inches or 20 something issues. So we have a, a ramp. It's got a unique facade or street front in that about 50% of the sidewalk is covered by a raised uh, platform, a metal deck platform, which is not that uncommon, um, uh, which is up those three steps to begin with. And then in front of that, there's about another, um, I don't know, maybe eight feet of concrete. I'm gonna stop you for one second. Sure. Are you able to share a picture of this existing building or am I yes. not seeing it? No, I can share a picture. In June, you're going to have to help me out here. So I'm going to shrink them down. This is the um, used paint bar, correct? On the first floor, this is a um, used paint bar. Is that the building? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, I'm sure I thought you you all have the uh, the. Draw Angela, we do, we, I, you did send it to me and I made it clear this afternoon that it has, you guys need to present it. Um, okay. So please do. So I gave you privileges. Okay. To share. I'm going to have oh, Do you have an existing picture and then some sort of proposed the picture? Where, where is it? I can lock, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, everybody. How do I get to my projects folder? How does it plan to Let's see what's up here. I'm trying to shrink this down. Give, I'm sorry, uh, folks. I'm going to move this as quickly as I can. Get Brandon over here. I can't shrink this screen. Get it out of my way. I got to get to the folder. So the work is a new handicap ramp, and and that's part of the reason. Uh, besides the repair, besides the absolute necessity to make this a safe space, you are going to propose to us now how you get into the building using a ramp. I can't move. Uh, yeah, not just not just that. The problem is, where's my hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Where's the project folder? I said I need access just, to the project. Just, just this folder. folder. Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, projects. 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 Got it. 
Okay, so let me go back to this. I'm going to have to share my screen. It's, it's loading. There we go. Okay. Shrink this down. Move this up. I'll push this. Can I share my screen? How do I do that? Uh, share. Yeah. Share. Share. Share my web webinar window? No. I want to share my computer screen. I I wish I knew the answer. I don't know if Lucy knows the answer. Um, he needs to press share, and when it says share, it should come up with a box of what he wants to share, and he needs to click on that item or that document. Excuse me. Do you see a share by, by box at the bottom, or share content? That one. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> ah, beautiful. Okay, so now we're looking at this one here. I don't see it. Hold on. Not so beautiful. Where Where am I seeing it? I don't see it. Does anyone else see it's it? It's coming. It's coming. Okay. Yeah, it's coming. Okay, then now they're over. So pause until everybody confirms that we see it, because I still don't see it. We're sharing 329 Greenwich Street. It's... it's uh... It's heavy because of the photos. Yeah, that's a very heavy file. So of photos. Okay. And it's loading. No, no, don't go anywhere, Brandon. I might screw this up. You do this all day long. I, I do it once a month. Guys, change. Yeah. Did you get anything? I'm not seeing anything, unfortunately. But I'm on a phone. I'd love someone else to just say they're not seeing anything or if they are. It still shows that he's buffering, that it's Angelo Costa is starting to share his oh, content. I see, I see. People are viewing 329. Not responding. It says not responding. The file's too big. Lucy, can we put up a PDF on our end? He I sent me the same thing. That's why I couldn't, I couldn't do it. He mm -hmm. sent me the same file. It's a huge file. I mean... Angelo, can we just, if someone else is here for the next project, because now we're 13 in, can you work on yes. sheets, what it looks like today and what you're proposing? Yeah, then, we'll make smaller files. I didn't know. Did you get a email saying that it was not? Uh, so it's, work it's, on that and let's see if someone else can see, give us their presentation. Will do. Thank you. Okay. Sorry for the trouble. Okay, 47 Walker Street. Let me go back to the attendees. Can we do it now? June? Oh, this is going now? Yeah, unmute me, I guess. They're going to take me out. Forty-seven Walker Street, are you here? Okay, I'll move you over. Okay. So, forty-seven Walker, tell us. But we know the address. Tell us the general. Uh, what are the items that are being seen by the Landmarks Commission at their public hearing? Oh, hello, sorry. Uh, so yes, uh, 47 Walker Street. Uh, the scope of work is for painting uh, the wood doors, uh, the windows, uh, the frames, and 
paint everything uh, of the color of gray. I don't know if I can try to share for you can see the plants. We have to see the plans. It's not, unfortunately, we can't do anything without seeing some sort of existing condition. Okay. And uh, let me, yes, let me try to share. Uh, Perfect. Okay, one sec. Yeah, okay, one sec. Oh, yeah, we see your screen. Have... Your screen. Yeah? Right? Oh. Okay, cool. One second. You can see. Perfect. I see the existing photo yes. and I see the uh -huh. old. Photo. Perfect. Yes, correct. Okay, so let me now show you. So this is the building that you can see right now. Uh, the color is beige and with blue. And let me now show you. This is this is how it's right now. You can see the existing elevation view and a uh, close up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, okay. Am I the only one seeing very tiny pictures? Uh, you see better? That's, that's getting better, yes. Thanks. Yeah? Okay. If so you, pin, if you pinch it, you can also see them pretty well. On the top, go ahead. Uh, sorry, what? Just go ahead, sorry. Okay, oh, don't worry. <laughs> So yeah, this is the color that we are gonna propose. I'm gonna show you. It's a gray. We we would like to paint like the whole. Sorry. So okay. Uh, this is a well an example building for Walker Street. And I'm sorry. That's this a, is that's one. A, what was that a picture of? That you were just on before. Uh, oh, before that, that's an adjacent building. Yeah, on Walker Street. That's something to show that there are all the buildings, you know. Yeah. Saying. But yeah, no, no, it's not a project. Yeah. This is the project, and this here we can show uh, the ground floor that we want to paint. Okay. This is how it's right now uh, blue. You can see the frame. Okay. And, blue. and this is the proposal that we like. Uh, paint everything on gray. Oh. Ooh, you surprised me with that one. Okay. <laughs> so that's it. It's oh, painted. I mean, right show, now. Yeah. Paint it right now. You, and you want to paint uh -huh. it. You want to paint yeah. it gray. Okay. Yeah, what about the, the signage? Is the signage? Yes, it's going to be a sign. Sorry, cut off. Uh, this is, is the sign that signage, we're going to. Is the signage just a staff level? It looks like a staff level sign. The sign. It looks like regular. Yeah, yeah the sign, yeah. Yeah, that's on a staff level. Uh, here's the color that we would like uh, to change to so this color. Uh, on bright gray, that's the color. Okay. I don't know if you can see here. I see it well. I think that that <clears throat> that's the presentation, right? It's you want to paint it gray. Could you put up the slide yes. that shows the proposed? Sure, uh, give me one second. And then I'm just going to make a couple comments and questions. If you yes. guys do a paint analysis of any part of the facade. By any chance? Sorry. Do instance of any of the parts of the facade, whether it be the windows and doors or the cast iron element. Everything. No. Did you do a paint analysis? Uh no, I don't think so. Okay. They, they made a paint analysis. No, I don't think so. Okay. So I I'll start. Um, I'm, I'm not, I don't think I've ever seen this kind of happen where the attempt to paint the whole first floor, one color, despite the columns being, you know, columns, it doesn't work for me. Um, it's too out of the ordinary is the word I'm going to okay. use. And so, 
uh, if you wanted to paint it all one color, I would probably, uh, I could probably go for all the same color as the rest of the building. Um, okay. If you told me a story about how the building's supposed to look like a marble building, and even though it's cast iron, it's painted all the same. But <clears throat> otherwise, I can't, I couldn't be behind a favorable resolution. Uh, I couldn't support this paint job at the first floor level. And so okay. uh, I, I want, I want uh, maybe just anyone else to go who has their hand up already. Uh, and then otherwise, let's just kind of chime in and go around the virtual table with their thoughts, please. I'm trying to see if anyone has anything to say. I see Alice. So Alice and then Roger. Hi, I'm just here actually for something else, but I'm looking at this. Um, I, I'm just curious, Jason, isn't it? I mean, I just pulled up a picture. Isn't it currently all one color? Did I, I, I came in a little late here, but it, it's not. is your objection to that it's, it's all one color or? It's not all one color, I don't believe. I believe the wood infill is painted one way. And uh, yeah, she's going to put up a picture of the existing, and okay. I believe the I columns are painted the same color as the building. Uh, otherwise, yeah. it would be really unusual. The, I just, I guess I'm seeing something. Oh, look, can I see the existing? So that's Wait. not the yeah. Oh, this. That's the existing right now. So they want to paint it gray the whole way, like the, the stones. Yeah. Black. If you put it, pull up Google Maps, it actually comes up all gray. That's why I'm confused. That's ah. interesting. So that's if you want to see it all gray, it's in Google Maps. Anyway, okay, thanks, uh, Jason. Sorry. Is this a legalization? No. no okay, no. great. Thank you. Who else wants to go? Roger wanted to go. He wants to paint it black. Sorry to interrupt, Roger. <laughs> Sorry. Roger, go. Yeah, um, you know, we should ask for a paint analysis. It's not a difficult or expensive thing to do, but just to not even look at what the histor historic paint was, I think, is something <clears throat> we should ask for before we make a decision. And I agree with you, it's um, not appropriate to be all one color. I mean, we're we're in a historic district and we should be sensitive to that. Thank you. Okay. Jason, can you hear me? Yes. Go, Vicky. Well, the reason I would disagree that I, I don't understand why you want to paint it all the same color because you're painting columns, which are vertical support, and there are a vertical continuation, and then you have the fabric behind. So once you paint it the same color, you are mixing two things that we typically keep apart for a good reason. So could you explain to us why you want to paint it all the same color and obliterate all of this uh, hierarchical weeding and elimination of structure? Yes, sure. So if the client, they would like to paint that, I have to be honest, that's the only reason. Okay, that's a good enough reason. If we would like, yeah. Okay, anybody else after Vicky? I'm happy to close it up and say we don't like it. Please don't paint it gray. I have my hand up. Okay. Oh, sorry, Bruce. Go ahead. I'm um, sorry I came in late. I'm just curious. Was this a gallery usage? I thought I saw DM gallery in the lower left corner. No. Uh, yeah, D DM gallery. That's the it's name. Called, it, it, and it is an art uh, uh, an art gallery, a fine art gallery. Sorry, what? It is a fine art gallery. It is a, you know, painting, sculpture, uh, video oh, installation. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, does anyone else have their hand up? Is it okay if I, <clears throat> if we write that we would, we would not support painting everything gray? Okay, does anyone say not agree with painting it all one color period? It's just okay. one level is a stripe versus the other levels. I, I don't get it. I think that's part of the, the, the flaw is that no one kind of gets it. So we could uh, just keep it at, at, at something like not 
painting below the cor the uh, the lower little corner there in color. I mean, we don't support it. I guess my question: is, is there anyone out there that supports it on the on the? No, sport? but by the way, if you go to their website, you will see that the one color in a, in a, another cast iron building they have is sort of their signature facade look. So so they're just trans they're transposing it over, which doesn't mean we like it. I'm just saying that's the context that I see. Okay. So does anyone want to call it the question? Call the question. Okay. So all in favor? Am I allowed to ask that or is that Yes, yeah, go yeah, we can do it that way. The only people that are not here is Susan Cole and Chow. So we'll go with approvals, you know, et cetera. Okay. Can I get so no thank you so much? Okay, so I didn't hear that, I'm sorry. I didn't either. Yeah, so can I get some wording of what we're voting on? <clears throat> on um, this is frozen. Oh, there you are. We're going to vote on uh, saying that we yeah. of the of the of the person uh, you know proposed first floor cornice one. Well, I mean, I had said it would be okay if it was the same color, but anyway, and that's not for me to say. So, does that sound okay? And that. Uh, Roger wanted to do a, have to do a, which I'm fine with added. Going in and out. Why can't we can hear you even worse than me? <laughs> is, this is this better? Hello. Can everybody hear me now that I turn my video off? Yes. Oh. Well, this is ridiculous. We should I be meeting. I can hear you. Okay, so I, I want to say, uh, not through a computer for the rest of my life, that we don't like the proposal to paint it all one color below the cornice. That's it. Could be that plus Rogers' request. We request. That they do a paint analysis since they're doing develop they're they're you know doing some work on the building. Two lines. Mm -hmm. Alice, you have a question? Yeah, Jason, if I could just uh chime in here a little bit. I think, you know, as board, we need a slightly more reasoned approach to why we may or may not approve of something than I like it or I don't. I think that's a it's kind not of appropriate. Okay, and why is that? I think because Roger brought up that he that it's not uh, like its neighbors, or that it doesn't have an historic underpinning, or something that allows the commission to know why it is this board is rejecting it. You know, I would just give a little more detail on that. That's all. Thanks. Would be the only building, you know, kind of thing. But yes, I'll give some more detail. Uh, I, I I think it's. Uh, extra out of the ordinary to even it's just so blatantly inappropriate that it's not historically appropriate. That's basically just the foundation of of appropriateness. It, it, it's supposed to look like a building with columns. So if you paint the columns the same color as the infill, it ceases to look like that building. No, that's a reason. I mean, there's something to that effect. Alice, but I, I, I already stated it, it obliterates the entire architectural vocabulary. Right? The columns are not, they, they are support structural elements and they're not the same fabric as the wall behind or the glazing. So you would be equalizing, you know, all human tissue, whereas we are made up of multiple parts. Well, I don't necessarily agree with this conclusion, but I'm not a member of this committee, but I, I think just as long as you have your reasoning and it's, you know, sound to, to the committee, that's where you want to position yourself. So it's just, it, it sounds fine. Dating architectural fact. Okay. 
Okay. I didn't mean to cut anything short about the description, but that's kind of what I was planning on putting in the. A long the evening. So, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, well, that's why I, I see I, that I, the gallery is just a, 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 a currently a. You know, a building or two away in the landmarks district and the facade is almost identical and it's painted a solid color. Just saying. So, obviously, it was approved. <laughs> Passed. Okay, but Bruce, do you want to cite that? Or are you a kind of guy who's in, are you in line with what I'm thinking? That even uh, though uh, I, I'm yeah. sort of neutral. I, I don't, I, I don't agree with the hyperbole of Vicky's analysis. I think it's, uh, I could go either way. So I will go with the sentiment of the board of the committee. Okay. I will back it up with some sound evidence, hopefully that everybody likes and we'll, and we'll put it up as a resolution. Done by me, if that's okay. And, and should we formally vote? Cause I don't know if we did even that. We didn't do that. Any opposals? Any abstains? Abstain? Anyone abstained? Um, I'm abstained because I'm a true neutral. Okay. And any recusals? Uh, Lucy, did you get Forsberg? I abstain. Thank you, sir. I was out. Uh, I, I lost connection for the majority of the presentation. Okay. To re to abstain abstention abstentions. Any recusals? Okay. Motion carries. Three twenty nine Greenwich Street. Are you ready? Now, I turned my video off myself because I'm having trouble with the bandwidth here, which is ridiculous that we're still, you know, that that's something we have to face. But so I may turn off my camera, but I'm 100 percent all in on this. And it's just to benefit my set, you being able to hear me. Angelo, are you ready for us? Yes, what we did is we had sent the link before uh, and uh, we were told that it did work and it was opened, but then apparently once we started this, uh, she told us we she couldn't open it. Um, having said that, what we did was we took the file, it's got a lot of photographs in it, and we okay. split it down to four files. This is the first one? Yeah. All right, let's see if this one now loads. Much shorter. Can we please announce who you are and what we're what we're looking at now? Okay. What uh, is the subject? Okay. So this is there. So you're seeing our screen. 329 Greenwich Street. So okay. So this is um, a building, a mixed use building that's being legalized and getting a new certificate of occupancy. There's uh, it's been actually being worked on for quite a few years. And one of the requirements is that we put in a handicapped ramp. The issue, the immediate issue here is not so much the handicapped ramp to get into the building, which is required by law, but in reviewing the circumstances, we see that the entire sidewalk and the structural and, and the a vault, the raised platform metal vault is collapsing. So much so that it did get a violation just two days ago. Um, and uh, I don't know if you can see, if you can see, see my Peter, screen. Uh, there you go. Thank okay. you. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to shrink you guys is, actually. Uh, get rid of us. So here's the building, it's 329 Greenwich. There's work going on throughout the building. We're working with landmarks and everything else on this, on this building that is not the immediate concern. The immediate concern, now this, this, there's four files now. This is the first file. Um, and this is the old historic photos. Okay. This is this request now is all about the sidewalk. And you can see the existing platform. This raised metal platform. It's up some uh, some steps here. Let me see if I can zoom in on it a little bit. And you can see this concrete in the front. I don't know if you can see my cursor. And then there's a step, and then there's another step. So we need to provide for the Muse Bar, which is commercial use down here, uh, handicapped access, and we have to provide handicapped access to this door, which gives us access to the upstairs residential apartments. 
All right, so this black line here represents the area that will be affected. We're not, as part of this application, having anything to do with the facade of the building. Okay, that's, that's being handled separately. But the problem is, is that this sidewalk is structurally failing. So much so that by coincidence, when the planning, the construction inspector was out there uh, two days ago or three or four days ago, happened to be when we had that torrential downpour and he actually could see how bad it was. The, usually the sidewalk vaults are underneath these raised platforms. In this case, the sidewalk vault goes all the way out to the sidewalk and the curb. So there's a, a front section of the sidewalk vault, and then there's another underground sidewalk vault underneath this lower portion of the sidewalk. The ramp that's going to be proposed, and you'll see drawings in a minute, is to basically come up, around, and up to this door and the platform here. There's a access panel here in front of this door to the restaurant that we have to preserve because this is the only access into that sidewalk vault except from inside the cellar. When we went to inspect this for doing the ramp, we found it with major structural failures, and you're going to see that in some photographs coming up. Uh, so this is another view of the same sidewalk, so you can see the look at it. Here's some more photographs of it. You'll see that the, the uh, patch concrete on the top, the metal plates, this sidewalk vault entrance that's right in front of this. Um, and to tell you the truth, if you once you see the structural conditions underneath, you'll wonder why anyone, especially me, would want to be standing on top of this thing. Um, so here's that sidewalk vault open, and it goes down to the basement. Okay. And here you can see these cracks and repairs that the city's been doing. Uh, and underneath this, it's failing. And underneath the raised platform, it's completely gone. Can you confirm that that's a hodgepodge of granite and concrete? Yes. Uh, that you, so there's granite there and there's, there's concrete. All, yes, one of the problems is that there's some granite underneath the uh, sidewalk that's completely cracked and falling apart. And we're concerned that once we start to remove this, all of it's going to fall apart. There's metal there's metal framed glass lights underneath the raised platform, which is completely rusted and gone. Can you show us the, 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 the lights under the platform? Yeah, yeah, we will. I think that's going to be, what are we up to, number nine? That's going to be in another, another set of images. So you can see this structural, this steel beam that is completely uh, uh, corroded. It's being propped up by some stuffed in four by fours. Uh, down in the cellar level, and it's been like that so long that this is gone. There's actually, I don't think we have the photograph of the other end of the beam. We have the other I'm going to stop you one more time. Just don't, I'm not trying to be rude, but we just have so little time. Okay. I don't think anybody here is disputing that this is in terrible emergency shape. I know I've been on some emails that you've sent to Luchin. So yes. let's go right to what are you taking out and what are you putting back in? Okay, so let me take out where, this one here. 2.1.5. We're going to run through the rest of these pretty uh, nice and quickly. It's another 13 images. And just so other committee members know, the lead up to this is Angelo has been contacting the office because it's such a terrible emergency safety wise. And Luchin was helping him get in touch with some people who could help him get emergency work done. Okay. Just saying to everybody about that. Okay. Uh, this is taking a while. Maybe I'm oh, no, this is the oh, okay. this is the uh, big photos. These are the big these are the big photos. Yeah. But while this is loading, Angelo, just so yes or no, in case we can't see it because it's such a heavy file, there are yes, existing yes. original materials there throughout yes. the whole sidewalk. Okay, you're not denying that. It's just the way it is, and so I think then. Please just focus, focus, focus on what okay. the proposal is for the ramp. So underneath that metal frame, which we have to rebuild anyway for the uh, handicap ramp, there's uh, 
street lights, the old, the old street lights um, in metal frames. Um, they're the circular glass lights. Um, all the panels are severely rusted. If you touch them, they literally fall apart and fall out. They are mounted underneath the platform by about six inches. There's a concrete platform poured on top of them. Um, and, you know, you might be able to actually look <laughs> at these. Yeah. Um, you'll see those metal panels there. I don't see Which, any. Uh, on my screen, uh, where, where I, not, not on the main. Okay. There we go. So here we come. Oh, that's the, that's the granite. And now the granite is underneath, and they were wondering whether or not we could take the granite. But the granite is cracked and failing and leaking. When we were there last week, there was water coming through this. This granite can't be saved. It has to be removed as soon as we take off the top layer that's on top of the concrete that's on top of this. This whole thing's going to fall apart. And the only one way to remove this is there's going to be jackhammers there, and they're going to have to pull this out. It's going to end up on a truck. This is underneath uh, that uh that file so that's this one um i'm going to close these out right uh, just, just what you're proposing i i really i'm not trying to vouch for you here but the slow running computer and and i i i believe in my heart of hearts if anybody else doesn't agree i see all this deterioration we, you don't need to sell us on how deteriorated this is i and my professional opinion it's very deteriorated we want to desperately see your amazing proposal for how you're going to solve access to the building. So these, the, the proposal is to simply, we're going to have to remove these, and we were our proposal right now is to discard them. These are not the old slave ships uh, uh, glass switch. lights. So this uh, is a temporary proposal. What you're proposing? No, no, the proposal. The the, proposal. Okay, we'll go to we'll go. No, the proposal. The last page. I'll go to the last page. This yeah. is the dot lights. And we'll uh, go to part four. Part four, yeah. This will show you the twenty-three. <clears throat> it should be fine. Again, the page two. It's it's freezing up on us. Part three. Uh -huh. Is anybody frustrated that we're on a video conference and if we were in person, we could just do this? This yeah, is, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. honestly, okay, someone want, else want to talk? I feel like I'm talking. This is, we can't, if you can't get it up, we can't keep going. I mean. Can I show them to our, can I show them to our regular camera? I mean, I don't feel comfortable being in on this, but um, I'll, that, I'll take a poll from everybody else. Here, I want to do business, no, but no, no. I need to see this. Go to the last page. Go to the last page. Can you see this page? No, it's just in uh -oh. one little frame at the top of my screen. <clears throat> oh, I don't even see that. Well, it's laying down right now, but even when it was upright, it, it's weird. If you look at somebody's face, that's how much space that whole picture has potentially. Small. Can you bring it down here? Just this one? You have to bring down the. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to throw one out here. Do we have even the next applicant? I mean, I think we're going above and beyond, like trying to make this work for you, Angelo. I want to make it work for you in every way, I promise. But. Um, so go to the next applicant and say he's ready. It's at the screen. The images are here. I don't know why you're not seeing it now. May I ask a question? I also see. I'm sorry, my hand is not. He's on. not sharing his screen. That's what's happening. I, he has privileges, but he's not sharing. He's looking at his own screen. You have to press share, sir, at the bottom. I did. It, you see this? And this share. I hate sharing. It's sharing. <laughs> Yeah, let's share. Right at the bottom, sir. I uh, wait at the bottom. It says share content. I hit share. Content. Now you have to clear the. Now you have to click on what you're sharing, sir. I'm clicking on, on, the, on the window or something. Click I'm on it. On a window. Share your screen. I have it said share screen. Say share. There we go. Hey. There it is. Okay. Yes, we got it. Okay. So this is the seller level. 
We've got a restructure it. We'll skip that. This is the level above. That's the proposed This is the proposed plan. This is the new sidewalk. Scroll up, please. From the Thank curb to the, to the sidewalk. Perfect. Leave that. Just let us start with the plan and let people soak it in. So, and let people, I'm not going to call anyone. If you want to say something to plan about the proposal, please ask it now. Of course, we'll see the rest of the slides, but if anybody wants to just sit on this plan, which is very telling, let's look at it for a second. All I want to know is what is the material? Great. We, we see the geometry. What's the material? All the historic granite is going to be gone. Is it concrete with, with, with uh, expansion, uh, you know, cuts? What is the material? What, it's simple. This is a simple sidewalk. <clears throat> This is standard concrete sidewalk Thank with you. DOT required expansion joints and control joints. Could you do some nice granite back there? The I mean, granite that's there has got to be removed. No, new uh, granite. This Not, is all. This is all metal panel. Okay. Does anyone else okay to see an elevation of this now? We have an elevation and isometrics and sections. Let's see some of them, please. Thank you. There's an elevation. There's a section, and it shows existing these existing conditions. That's where the light panels are now. Okay. Yeah. This is a section to the vault as proposed. What color are you painting the the ramp? The rails can be uh, and the ramp, the whole thing. What they painted. We'll paint the rail basically. I would probably paint it the same as the colors that are already in the building, which is a uh, an orange kind of graph. And this is a section. Hold on, let's take a step back. First of all, we want to know exactly what color you're painting it, especially if you're going to paint it. Orange. So, can you just tell us what color you're painting the ramp and the railing? Uh, I don't have a paint. I don't have a paint color. We want that for our resolution. If which I, so, please make a note to get us the color that you're painting, the railing and the ramp for me. Uh, and then uh, does anyone else have, and, and it's diamond plate? There's a diamond plate edging. Also existing. So oh, that's the existing next. one. Yeah, that's it. And this is the, okay. and this is diamond plate metal going up. All diamond plate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody have any questions about the ramp or the sidewalk material? He says it's concrete, like you see everywhere else. And he says the ramp looks like a, a very regular ramp and railing that's to be painted a color that he's going to tell us okay. after the meeting that I can put. Actually, the last version, I'm going to correct myself. This is a concrete. This is going to be done in concrete, not the, the metal plate. Gonna this concrete. is going to be concrete. Yeah. Okay. So, hey, Jason, I have my hand up. Go, please just go without putting hands up. Um, so I have a, I have a few questions. Uh, and, uh, Angela, uh, who, perhaps you can help me with this. Um, so there's a, uh, local law 11 for facades um, that need to be inspected all the time. Is there any law that you're aware of that requires these uh, sidewalk vaults, especially the vaults that, that extend out to the street that requires them to be inspected on any regular basis? Uh, no, there hasn't been any failure to do that. I mean, they've gotten a violation for the damage that's there. So the building department did see this um, and we actually called them in to say, hey, listen, we've got a problem here and they want to confirm that <clears throat> and, and that's what happened. There isn't a regular inspection uh, requirement that I know of to, to inspect the sidewalk walls. Right in the city. That's that's what I was aware of. I mean, this 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 now, very much concerns me. I walk I walk by here probably daily, if not several times daily, and my wife and I do. And to think that I could end up in somebody's basement is is very very concerning. Um, and it does sound like at a city level there needs to be some sort of a uh, a new law introduced that some uh, fairly quickly. That um, these these inspections, uh, you know, that that these vaults need to be inspected uh, on some regular basis. Okay, so going back to your project, that are severely damaged. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it should never have gotten to this point. These these this 
you know, the moment that there was some sort of leaking, it should have been, these should, these should be inspected. Yep. <laughs> Otherwise we're gonna have, uh, you know, everybody ended, ending up in, in, in basements. So going back to the project, um, one question I have is uh, this, this uh, concrete that's being proposed, is, is, it, is it not able to put um, the, uh, the, the, the lights, are, are those able to be, um, you know, what's there that was covered up with concrete or, or is there any way to uh, reproduce those, bring those back? Yeah. Not, not really. I mean, if you looked at the photos before, you'd see that half of the, uh, many of the, the glass lights are gone or missing. There's nothing left to the frame. Um, they'd have to be completely, they can't be restored. They'd have to be completely refabricated. Um, we thought and discussed at length that whether or not we can save them, take them out and save them somewhere on the site for literally historic purposes of preserving them. I was under the understanding that these types of lights are not that uncommon or have or not that common are that are not uncommon and don't have that special historic um, value that some of the other lights in the streets do. These were metal frames with the glass lights. So if we can preserve them or store them on site, we'll do the very we'll you know make that as part of the specification to do that. Um, I, I want to say that. The piping on this would probably be painted just black is the only thing that would be uh, the only color we would be looking at right now. There is a lot of black in the in the current trim of the building and the doors and the frames. So we would pick that color up from the uh, windows and doors and, and put that in, put that on. The so, Angelo, in my resolution, I'm going to put that it's painted black, right? Yes. What about the, the concrete is painted black too? No, the concrete would be the same. We would try to do the same concrete and finish that's on the adjacent sidewalk. On this side of the building, um, there is relatively new sidewalk. On the other side, they also have some old sidewalk that's not in great repair. Someday the DOT is going to come in and replace all that. And they have a handicapped issue that they're going to find someday is going to wake them up also. But okay. I don't know that they have a vault problem. Over here, they have a relatively brand new, recently poured uh, sidewalk, and it would be just a continuation of that, um, which is just a natural concrete DOT standard sidewalk. Okay. Uh, Gerald, any other questions or anybody else with any other questions? Yes, the southern end of the building to your north, the dry cleaner. That's original granite right there. There are three or four squares against the facade of, of original granite too, or am I misreading that? Uh, which drawing are you looking at? This here? I'm not looking at drawings, I'm looking at the actual physical. Um, He's saying site. the south edge of the building to the north, which is where you have your cursor, sir. Yeah, yes. the, dry, the dry cleaner. Yeah, so dry cleaner. there is some original fabric in that sidewalk right there, like three or four pavers of original granite toward the facade, is that is that correct? Uh, I believe no. so. I think uh, right. I have to look at the mm -hmm. photos, but so it seems they, that they've that's... done work here. Yeah. First of all, I, I do want to say that the Pistol cleaner work. building does not need, unless the <clears throat> doors don't open wide enough, it's level. So it doesn't need uh, ADA access ramps because, as I say, it's it's level to the doors. Second of all, on it's the, on the building next door. On the building to no, the No, if you door. actually if you look at their front door when you open it, as soon as you open the door, yeah, there's a steep ramp up about That's eight inches because there's a step up from the sidewalk. So when they open their doors, they actually have a non-compliant yeah. ramp. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm looking inside the dry cleaner and I'm there all the time and it's it's a level opening. But be well, that as it may, I'll take your word for it. Yeah. What I want to say is that. The only original fabric on the block that's left is yours and the one at uh, what is it, three twenty one, the the dry cleaner, well, um, and the dry cleaner is not in as bad condition as yours. I take it this has nothing to do with the building next to yours on the south that has been in terrible condition and has all kinds of construction issues where Clementine was going to move. Is that right? These are two completely separate. Issues yes. and buildings. Yes. Okay. So I would just propose that it's it's brutal to lose um, it's brutal to lose whatever 
my, whatever fabric is left on the sidewalk. It's brutal. And this is how you lose <laughs> fabric bit by bit. On the other hand, if it's as disastrous as you say, I don't know what else you can do immediately as for the, um, the, 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 you know, light, the vault lights, which is a shame to lose. It looks like they're basically covered anyway. I would suggest, and I wouldn't do it in any other instance that we approve a, a reasonably colored concrete, but that the, um, the ramp replacement be done in, uh, in, in, you know, in metal plate, not in concrete. That's the only compromise. I, I, would, have think. No, I would have no objection to that. And by the way, the cellar vault that extends beyond the property line, even it belongs to the city, not the owner, but it's the responsibility of the owner to maintain. That's that's the law. I agree. Okay, before I say anything else, who else wants to speak? Just speak. It's not like people are rushing to speak. So please, whoever wants to go next. Yeah, uh, could I? Uh, uh, thanks, Rob. Jason. <clears throat> I'd just like to add to Bruce's comment that uh, if the glass is not reusable, we've in the past asked the client or the <clears throat> applicant to uh, save it um, or um, or let us save it because these are very rare remnants now of, of a past gone time. How many approximately, how many glass insets are there that you're going to be removing? <clears throat> um, you know better than I do, about four. Yeah. There are that on uh, this half of the building is where they are, and they mm -hmm. measure probably at 18 by 24, 18 by 36 yeah. each. So, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I'll have to go there and count them, but we can give you an it's actual gone. number. Gone. Yeah, okay, thank you. It's gone. What do you mean this one's gone? This is this is uh, okay. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Slab. I know there's no lights yeah. in it, it's well, gone. Then... A metal panel, we'll save everything we can. Okay, just for a second, Angela, hold on. So nobody else on the board? Is there even anybody else here that wants to say anything about anything we've discussed? Okay, I'm gonna say one last thing. Um I'm 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 actually really disappointed that we can't get some fresh granite pieces in there instead of concrete. It, it's just not that much more expensive and it's just being a better neighbor for the rest of our, you know buildings that stretch on Granite Street. So if there's any way that you guys can figure out a way to amortize the extra cost to get granite in there, I'd like to put into the resolution, unless anybody objects, that we would, in some way, whatever the wording is, that we would really appreciate it if they would at least look into granite for the areas to the curb uh, instead of concrete with the last hope that you guys do the right thing for the, the look of the neighborhood. And don't even answer now, because I'm just going to put the request in the in the resolution, if that's okay with everybody. Right. Okay, so called a question on a resolution that supports the handicap access to the resi and commercial spaces and the safing off of this already very dangerous space and the morose about how we're going to lose some really terrific old uh, you know, historic fabric that some of which has been covered up for a long time. We saw it in the designation photo with the with the, the vault lights and and that's it. Lucia muted, I think you're trying to talk. And that the ramp area will be done in oh, all, diamond plate, not all concrete. Diamond. All diamond plate. Yep. <clears throat> Second. Your Can't hear What's your the face. final statement about the ramp? It's going to be all painted black diamond plate, so no concrete on the top surface. And of course, you and know. How slippery is that surface? Well, you know, I was thinking, of my, I don't know, uh, concrete. I've seen it. I wonder. Well, it, we only have so many options, though, because so at you least know, we, the diamond we, plate. Has Betty, we've been using diamond plate for years. It's the best. ADA ramp surface for Actually, centuries and it has little studs in it. So it's quite, it's little, little raised studs. It's, it's, it's probably grippier than concrete in a storm. And as someone who pushes my wife in a wheelchair on a regular basis, I can vouch for it too. 
<laughs> Let me tell you, it's very different dealing with your own than pushing somebody else when you're able bodied. That's true. That's true. Well, I'm also, you know, if there is technology, then it's, and we're going to see a lot of these ramps. <clears throat> uh, I'll even look into some things and, and we can add something. We want the best material. If you can put like these strips on it, I don't know, Angelo, please make it, you know, the best of the best for us. Wait a minute. We, we're now, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to argue with you, but I thought the consensus was concrete that is. You know, the appropriate color black railings and diamond plate. Now you're going to add. No, I thought you said all put something appropriate. That's I mean, that. No, I said I in the what future, Bruce, because Betty's brought it up and now she's in these meetings. We've been doing a lot of ramps and I'm just saying in the future. If there's something, of course, we would put it on. Oh, rip better, in the future, but, but not part of this in resolution. This case, in this case, we asked them to paint, do painted diamond plate for the top. Is that correct? Right. Okay. That's correct. Yes. So that is what we are going to ask for. We'll do some spitballing about future technologies. I'll do some work on it. I'm interested. Thank you. Okay, guys. So Can it's I get a, a second on Jason's motion? Okay. I see no one left. So is there anybody opposed? Anyone abstains? Any recusals? Motion carries. Thank you. Maritime building is next. Angelo, we really stuck with you, buddy. I hope you, uh, I wish you the best. <laughs> that was a tough one. Okay. Who's next? The maritime building. Is this the last one? No, we have two more items. I'm going to stop moving people over. I have a few people. Give me a minute. So the maritime building is a proposal to make an addition to a building that's already received an addition or modified such addition? Um, Jason, uh, were you, were you on the board when we went through the first, uh, <laughs> the first I know iteration? The project. I think it was before my time okay. and I, I know the did... players and I know what's going on. Yeah. I, I know Alice is here too. And I know she shared, you know, so, but I want to just say the same thing to these very knowledgeable presenters. We want to see what you have there today and what you're proposing to do and compare them on our small screens. So may, I love the building, but, but maybe not so much history of the building from the 19th century, even okay. though it's an amazing building. And if anyone disagrees, fine to see it. Tim, are you presenting or who is so I can pass over the controls? So, uh, I'll, I'll be starting with an introduction um, and then, but Tim's going to share his screen uh, for the deck and, and then I'll pass it over to him to run through. I'm actually going to start with just a little bit of history uh, that goes into some of the approvals. Um, I think it's probably helpful for, uh, for context. So, um, Tim, do you want to, if, if you can give Tim control, he'll share his screen and I'll walk through just the 1st slide or the 1st 2 slides. Um, actually, maybe we can jump to the next. Just the overhead view. Perfect. All right, um, so my name is Max Padden. I'm with Midtown equities. Um, as I said, we're going to jump in just to a little bit of history. It should take about five, 10 minutes, and then we'll jump into the deck. Um, the Battery Maritime Building at 10 South Street um, is uh, an iconic landmark building originally designed in 1906 by Walker and Morris. The Beau Arts Building originally served as a ferry terminal uh, for passengers traveling between Brooklyn and Manhattan. Uh, but with the, cessation, with the cessation of ferry operations in the 1940s, the building fell into a progressive state of disrepair. Um, it was intermittently used for storage and city office space, but really uh, a victim of, of disinvestment for, for many, many years. Um, from 2002 through about 2007, NYC EDC and the city undertook some preliminary facade and pier level work to stabilize the building, which at this point was frankly in danger of falling into the East River. Um, and then ultimately issued an RFP for further development of the building, which unlike the pier structure was not rehabbed at all by EDC. 
Um, in 2008, LPC approved an initial plan put forth by the successful respondent to the EDC RFP to restore and redevelop large portions of the building. Uh, the plan was later modified and a subsequent LPC approval was granted in 2010. And pursuant to that 2010 appro uh, approval, the redevelopment project was to include a complete re restoration of the historic B&B, as well as the addition of a new fifth floor atop the southern portion of the building. Um, so ultimately, one additional floor, whereas the 2008 approval actually had, I think, it was a seven story building, so three additional floors was cut down. Um, construction of that project commenced in 2012, pursuant to the approved 2010 plans, uh, but saw a number of setbacks and ultimately construction stalled and the development team uh, abandoned the restoration and the redevelopment project entirely. Um, the next few years saw the project in, uh, in litigation. Um, it was in litigation for about five years before the current ownership team of Midtown Equities, Centaur Properties, and Cipriani took over. Uh, we took over the EDC lease and restarted construction in 2019. And despite all the challenges that came with the pandemic, uh, the project was substantially completed by the end of 2020. By all accounts, it has been a resounding success. Uh, the building has received numerous accolades, awards uh, from the New York Landmark Conservancy, from Urban Land Institute, and others. Um, big success. I think so anyway. Um, now, uh, following substantial completion of all the major restoration work, uh, the ownership team is seeking CB1 support in its application to LPC for approval of certain modifications to the 2010 uh, approved plans for the BMB. Uh, many of the requested modifications are for planned future work, which focus on unlocking rooftop and open air access and use, which obviously has become a big priority across the city during COVID. Uh, but in addition, uh, our present application seeks to modify the 2010 approvals to fully align with existing as-built conditions at the BMB, which as a result of design changes made during construction deviate in certain respects from the 2010 approvals. Um, we have prepared a new set of building plans, which comprehensively set forth all changes sought from the 2010 approved plans, including those that would ratify existing conditions and those that would govern planned future work. Most of these changes require only staff level approvals at LPC and therefore don't rise to the level of community board review. But given our commitment to public participation and preservation, we think it's important to provide a comprehensive picture of all of the changes, including those which will not require a certificate of appropriateness to CB1. We just want to show you everything, get a full sense of what the final product is going to be. Um, we believe these modifications um, that's, that are set forth in the application and the, and the presentation that we'll run through um, are compatible with the historic uh, preservation objectives and are consistent with the overall spirit of the prior LPC approvals. So with that sort of history and framework, I'm going to hand it over to Tim Fry of Marble Architects, who's going to walk us through the presentation, and then um, both of us will take questions at the end, as I'm sure there'll probably be a few. Uh, thank you for that uh, excellent introduction and summary, Max. My name is Tim Pryatt. I'm an architect with Marble. I'm a director. I have been on this project since uh, 2007 when we helped uh, win the project from um, the, an EDC RP um, with a different developer. Um, and as Max said, it went through several hands. We were off the project for some time after securing all the historic approvals. Um, and then came back to the project with Midtown Equities in, in late 2018. I do have a um, number of slides, but I hear your suggestion to be very quick with the background, and I promise I will do so. Um, I really just you know want to walk through a couple of background things. I think it's important to tell the tell the whole story because it is a long and complicated one. Um, but I will. I promise I'll do so quickly. Um, it, the building was originally designed by Walker Morrison um, as a seven slip terminal. It never was actually built that way. There was a separation over time. Whitehall, of course, uh, was lost and, and then rebuilt. BMB now is the last remaining historic ferry terminal uh, in New York. Um, here you see on South Street, uh, looking back in the Whitehall terminal in the back, BMB in the foreground. Here's another view from um, over the park where the elevated L train you can see connected into the loggia and that great public second floor where passengers went right off the train and right onto the second uh, uh, level of the ferries while the horses went in underneath. So um, 
you know, it's, it was a building designed specifically for ferry use. It, um, of course, the, uh, you know, that was a time when there was, you know, 17 different ferry lines between Manhattan and Brooklyn. All the bridges were built. The building mm -hmm. fell out of use. Um, this was the condition in, in uh, the 90s. Um, EDC's exterior restoration was a wonderful um, uh, project, uh, but the interior remained unfinished. Um, and that's when they put out the RFP. This is the Great Hall on the second floor as we found it um, in, in uh, 2007. And here's the south facade as it originally was. Um, so here's a section through the building, South Street on the right side, the water on the left side, the Great Hall with its um, uh, lay light and, and skylight in, in the middle. The addition is a one-story addition, so it's a uh, four stories existing plus a fifth story in the mechanical uh, penthouse. Um, th this was the... Um, from 2012 to 2018, uh, the core and shell construction uh, was began by others, and then Midtown came back in after uh, their default. So, again, a long road to get here. Uh, just very quickly, going to go through um, the past LPC approvals. We originally had a much taller building that we presented the LPC and CB1 and had it approved. This is a seven-story building. Um, and uh, with the cupolas replaced, the existing ele elevator tower you can see on the left was enlarged. Um, here's some other views of that application. We had an active rooftop use at that time, uh, as you can see in the bottom right. Um, the, um, it was a higher, uh, you know, it was a tall addition, star cupolas and pergolas, the addition was set back. Uh, and then we had that bar and restaurant. The developer changed course and then sought historic tax credits from um, NPS uh, through SHPO. So we had to reduce the addition. So it was now a one-story addition. So the fourth floor was rebuilt. Um, the fifth floor was added and um, the cupolas we, uh, were also added back. Here's some views of that. You'll note here um, on the bottom right, there's the entry on South Street. We uh, proposed a projecting canopy with signage on the edge. That'll come up again later. All right, Tim, I just want to make sure, is the presentation still visible to all of the committee oh, members? No. And while you do that, I have a question also, just right on the SHPO subject. Does this have to go to SHPO too, what you're showing us, or are they, they're out of the picture? Sorry about that. Let me see. Can you see my screen again? Yes, thank you. Does Sh SHPO get involved again or no? Uh, good, it's a good question. They have approved the part three application. Um, so, um, but there are modifications beyond. So SHPO, we will be reaching out to SHPO. We're going to Landmarks first to seek their approval. Um, so here I was just saying, you can see South Street on the bottom right. Um, and the projecting canopy over the front door that had a little bit of edge signage on that. Um, and, you know, so this this proposal is 2010, reduced to one floor, reconstructed the historic cupolas. And then at SHPO's suggestion, we also added back the historic pergola on the, on the fourth floor um, and um, removed the elevator shaft and with it, the access to the roof. Um, so that was what was approved by Landmarks and SHPO. I'm going to just show you quickly some existing photographs. Um, so you can see um, some of these are, you know, still in, uh, you know, near completion. Um, the, what you'll note here is the steel on the end of the fifth floor um, and the steel that's on the roof. And both of those will play into our uh, proposal, uh, which you'll see very shortly. Um, this is has been enormously complex prog, uh, a pro, a project because you can imagine adapting a specific ferry terminal to these modern uses. Um, it's now uh, managed and has a long-term lease by uh, Cipriani. Uh, it's called Casa Cipriani, their facility here. They're a long-term steward to protect this building. 
um, and the economic engine that has really saved it. Um, and they're, uh, you know, they, they have brought with them 150 full-time jobs and many more part-time jobs. And so it, it really is a success story. Um, here you can see uh, a good example of, at the Western corner of how the new has uh, made itself both distinct and sympathetic to the historic architecture. Um, here you uh, look from basically Peter Minuet Plaza um, and see the Western facade and the Northern facade uh, in their current states. Uh, and here's the North facade that really does not change much from the historic at all. Uh, with that, I'll run you through the proposed. Um, the the uh, big part of what we're proposing today is really some modifications to the roof, the fifth floor and the sixth floor roofs. Um, it is a, um, I believe um, that the main thing we're looking to do is occupy uh, the sixth floor roof. At present, it is not occupiable. Um, we believe that that's consistent with the historic use of the building. Um, it was uh, changed the laws, in fact, to permit um, active use on the roof. Uh, and the pergolas and the cupolas were built, in fact, as a uh, open fresh air and recreational pavilion. Um, so this was, um, you know, that rooftop activity has always been a part of the BMB. Uh, and anybody that has visited and been on the roof can attest to the wonderful views spanning from Brooklyn Bridge all the way to, um, you know, all, all, all the way to the other side of the Hudson Bay and um, the Statue of Liberty. So um, just very quickly, I'm going to walk you through a couple of diagrams. This is a roof plan diagram of what was approved. And I'm always going to just go approved and proposed so you can see the differences. Uh, I understand there's you know, a lot of uh, little pieces here that we're proposing. So trying to make this as easy as possible. Um, the big thing to note is this gray box in the middle was the footprint of the historic, uh, sorry, of the mechanical uh, penthouse. Um, what we are proposing in order to make that roof occupiable is to reduce the footprint of that uh, bulkhead roof, roof enclosure. Um, the, that makes the steel uh, exposed on the front side. You'll see more about that. And then the fifth floors um, now also become uh, exposed. So uh, more on those to come, but just to give you the overall in section, um, here was the approved section. And then what is proposed is a smaller footprint. Um, the bulkhead penthouse still is 13 feet, but there's an, a couple of extensions that go higher. Uh, for elevator extensions that we will require to uh, facilitate accessibility and service to, to the outdoor roof space, which is now enlarged. Um, we are also um, moving the uh, railing towards the, uh, a little closer towards the perimeter to give us more, again, more usable space. Um, I'm again going to show now some renderings approved and then uh, existing condition and then propose. So here's the approved rendering. Here it is as built. Apologies that the photo couldn't exactly match the rendering, but here's the, the built condition. And then what we are proposing today. So uh, you can see in this critical view that elevator extension, which is one of those items that Max mentioned is, has already been built um, that we're seeking to ratify. The fifth floor wing uh, was glass. The glass is now reduced. The heavy steel uh, tubes that are there at present to support that glass would be removed and replaced with a lighter three season pergola on each end of the fifth floor um, uh, in order to really activate that outdoor space um, in, a, in a kind of three season way. We think it also um, uh, you know, brings a lot of activity to the roof, which is, uh, you know, really exciting because it's, it, it is visible. Uh, and then the railing moved towards the perimeter. Here we are then from the south view from the water, um, the original approved. The built, what was not built was the glass extension all the way up, um, or what has been modified, excuse me, is the glass. So now you see the structure that supported that glass. We want to remove that. 
You also see the exposed structure where the bulkhead was, but we have not built it all the way out. And in the proposed condition, you see those temporary kind of lightweight pergolas on either end of the fifth floor. And then at the sixth floor top roof, you see the um, exposed steel, which is now a pergola with an awning. You see the two uh, elevator extensions. You see the railing that is now moved towards the edge. Um, and uh, some other decorative uh, features, you know, they want to put um, the designer of the active space wants to have a like a, a, a boat, like a lifeboat feature um, and uh, lighting along along the edge. To, again, all to really activate this from on the space and and enliven the building from uh, the many vantage points that that can appreciate it. Here is the approved uh, west facade. Excuse what's me. The, east. What's the lifeboat? What was that lifeboat thing? You said so it's going to be decorated with lifeboats. Is that what you're saying? There is a light. I have a rendering coming up that uh, okay, shows cool. you exactly the lighting at the edge of that pergola. Um, so if I could return to that in a moment, um, I'll describe it in more detail. The east elevation, um, as seen from the helipad, uh, here's what is uh, uh, what it looks like today. Here is the proposed. So we're cladding half of the bulkhead. The rest becomes that pergola. Here is the fifth floor pergola. So, you know, relatively modest kind of touches on the on the roof edges of the building. Here is the, another view again from the this now is from the western uh, side again uh, from South Street. Here's what was built. Here's what's proposed. So we're a little closer here. We're seeing a little more detail. Um, it's a metal panel uh, enclosure, a metal railing. Um, there are a couple of screen walls that you would also see. Um, and then that lightweight trellis. All of this is largely, most of the metal work for the trellises and the rails would be painted the same dark olive green as the historic uh, facility. We do have historic paint colors that we're matching there. Um, and uh, the bulkhead, uh, uh, you know, I'll come back to the materials on that in a moment, just to show you existing photos of that roof. The railing is already there and moved to the edge. The um, enclosed, the bulkhead does not have an enclosure and the steel is exposed. Um, so it, it's, you know, sort of incomplete um, and, and, and awaiting the, these uh, approvals that we are seeking and hopefully uh, uh, to be successful in obtaining. Um, the approved cladding of that penthouse um, mechanical a penthouse was originally a fabric mesh facade. Uh, we're proposing to change that to a, a metal panel. Um, it still is a reflective silver color. The idea is that it picks up on the light of the sky and sort of diminishes its overall bulk. Um, and we think that um, is a successful solution for that mass. Um, here you can see now a view um, of a uh, proposed view on the roof of um, how that um, steel frame might be built out with a retractable awning, so a pergola, and then a retractable awning at the edge. Um, and here is where that uh, light feature would be. So there's a decorative um, red light feature along the top edge of, of that, um, really to announce itself on the waterfront um, the, it, the building has a very different scale from all the towers around it, and it's a sort of its long, low horizontal profile is really very distinctive. Um, and we've also lit, of course, the historic arches, and so it, it has quite a, a jubilant uh, presence on the waterfront. I would say that we're looking to continue to establish. Um, these are some additional renderings just of the fifth floor a pergola to show you how that is an operable system that goes from being fully enclosed um, in kind of, you know, shoulder season weather to fully open in, in the, the summer and the months or, or, you know, when the weather permits. Um, finally, I just want to show the um, signage on South Street. Um, this has, what was approved was signage on the edge of the canopy. 
Um, this was installed under a temporary permit that we're looking to have uh, ratified for a permanent con condition. Um, this is the only signage on the building um, to identify Casa Cipriani's main entry uh, into the um, into the ground and second floor event spaces. So these are um, uh, box uh, letter internally lit letters. They span the length of that awning, which is rather, you know, kind of low uh, and and uh, I want to say discreet. It's a you know it's just a simple blade that's painted the same green color. Um, here is it in section. The edge of that awning turns up, and uh, here's the internally lit letters. Um, th with that, um, we have some backup materials if necessary, but I think I would pause Let's here. For questions, yeah. And open Maybe. up for questions. Can you clarify the canopy uh, signage is existing and uh, was obtained under a temporary permit, right? And you're just saying, hey, can you guys approve it permanently? What's there? Is that right? That's right. We're looking okay. for people on what's there. Okay. So, I'm going to lead with that and say I'm I'm fine with the signage. That's me personally. Okay, so we I would be in favor of saying okay, and then for the <clears throat> adjustment above, I'm going to say that um, you know I'm I'm just looking at it at it from a, a perspective of changing the bulk of what's already been approved. Um, I, just from the rendering to me, the before and after, I, I didn't I, I didn't find it very jarring. Uh, I thought it kind of, I mean, I understand on the sides, you see these kind of canopies that were originally part of the mass, but in actuality, you are reducing the bulk. Um, and there's very few projects where you're going to find, I think, a bunch of preservationist people say, no, 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 don't reduce the bulk of the modern addition to a building. So. I would be in favor of moving towards a, uh, a, a, a an approved ki approval kind of resolution, but of course I, I want everybody else to speak and I know Alice wants was here just for this. So if we could lead with her comments and questions and then just everybody chime in when she's done. Does that work? Alice. Sure. Thanks a lot, Jason. Um, and thanks for the presentation. Um, you know, no one's going to argue that Marvell didn't do a marvelous job um, on this renovation. It's a beautiful building and you've treated it beautifully um, so far. I think, um, I think one of the things the public needs to know is that all of this work is being done entirely for members of a private club. And I think that's something that we need to keep into consideration here. That has nothing I know to do with landmarking, but it does. I do think it has to be made clear that when you speak of the cupolas that were once conceived as fresh air pavilions or the wonderful views that can be had if you happen to be someone who's visited the club, which in fact I have, um, you know, you, you can partake in that. But in fact, the public, the general public could never get up there to appreciating this. So all of this work is being done for, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I guess this is a question that this programming, this change in programming, which you haven't really reviewed yet, um, is for the hotel club. Is that correct? I mean, there's nothing here for the for public sector. We cannot access this new roof. Is that correct? The general public. Yeah, I, I think that's generally correct. The the rooftop space is uh, is a membership club. The the hotel, which also has access to these spaces, is open to the public. Obviously. Um, so, to the extent that a, a hotel guest was interested in in partaking, they certainly could. So, it's not fully closed off to the public. Um, well, it's, yeah. if you're a member of the hotel, not the general public. If you bought a room in the hotel at about a thousand dollars, you can go to the roof. Is that correct? But you can't go if you're. If I, I I couldn't enter it unless I was at the hotel. At least I was told that. No, that, that's that's correct, which okay. which I don't think is necessarily um, you know out of keeping with no. with other uh, similarly situated properties. Um, no, the, it's just that you're asking the public to this public to accept these changes, which I do want to review a little bit more because I do feel as if things look like they are quite a bit higher in certain places, which again may be fine, but I just think we need to fully understand the impacts of the scaling on this. Um, and the program. So 
I remember seeing some shot of a swimming pool. Is is this all about putting a swimming pool on the roof, or is that pool already exist, or did I see something and read it wrong? I thought I saw something in your presentation um, packet that looked like a swimming there, pool. There, there, there is a uh, part of the proposal to LPC does include a swimming pool. Um, I, it, it is not an architectural element and is not um, it is not visible from uh, from any of the streets. Um, so that would that would fall under the uh, staff level purview of, of LPC. Um, it does seem sort of significant to know why you're doing the work you're doing. So in answer to that question, isn't it because you are adding a pool and want to have these cabanas around the pool? I think that's, it seems, I just think it's helpful to know what reasoning for this project is. I, I think that's certainly part of it. It's not the, I, I wouldn't say that's the sole reason for, for uh, undertaking this work. The pool is not going to take up a, a huge portion of the roof and uh, much of the space up there um, is not going to be dedicated to pool space. It'll be and, and, and no, the cabanas don't frankly sit around the pool. They they are along. They, they are separate and apart um, and we anticipate that we'll probably have tables and and uh, ideally service up there or, or something of the sort. Well, I guess um, I was getting from Tim's um, uh, excellent presentation. But I think a little, a little missing a few things was that the whole idea was, I think he stated to kind of occupy the 6th floor and, and it had always been occupied for sort of active use. So, maybe if you could just tell us what is the purpose of this project. I, it, it, is, it is very much to activate the roof. So, there, um, assuming all approvals are, are obtained, there would be. A pool on one side of the roof, uh, the remainder of the roof would have tables, chairs um, and uh, umbrellas, a canopy, uh, just places to sit and lounge, essentially um, okay. separate, uh, separate and apart from the pool. Um, okay. Great, so that's what I figured. I just want to make sure everybody was aware of that. It wasn't quite clear and not seeing the, that plan that was shown to, I guess, to LPC would have sort of solidifies a little bit. But anyway, um, if you could just. Oh, Sorry, could you guys, clear that up, Alice, for us by showing us a plan by email. We would surely accept a plan that's a real plan, not just a block plan, for our review. I'm not yeah, saying we, we have pro we have provided that. You oh, good. Should. Okay, thank it's you. It's in that packet. If everybody took a look, okay. It's in yeah, that there, packet. there are there are right. additional drawings in the appendix that uh, show the roof layout and and. So, so would you put that up while we're talking about it? I mean, Alice, move on. Yes, but let's bring up. I know, I, sorry. Okay. Sorry. So, um, so the next question I have is a drawing also just to, uh, it's a little unclear exactly what the height differential differential is. You have uh, heights from the water level to the roof um, uh, uh, for the, oh yeah, there we go. There's the plan that I remember seeing. Yeah. So, so your, your question is, is the height of the, the additional height of the elevator overhang. Is that, is that right? The water, the roof of the top of the roof today of over whatever floor that, I guess that's you, you have 4 floors today and the roof. So is that the 5th floor? It's a large uh, 5 floors in the roof. 5 yeah, floors. Oh, five, five floors oh. in the roof. Maybe if you showed the section, I just, you've taken away the mechanical and you've raised it. Is that the only portion that's being raised? And by yes. how much, how many feet up more are seven, we going with this? Seven foot 11. So the, and that happens just at, if I can go to the elevation. So the, um, I don't know if you're seeing my cursor here, but. Yes, we can. So the, the, the roof of the of the penthouse in this line that I just drew has not changed. The the change is in the elevator bulkhead that's here and here that are uh, just under eight feet high. So there is some additional height just for those elevator overruns uh, to again to facilitate access. And and what about the so so that okay so it's gone up 15 feet in total more. No. That, well, seven plus plus the eight foot elevator. So, Is that right? so the, um, the top of the roof pavers remains at, at uh, this elevation. 
Uh, and then the top of the bulkhead roof remains at that elevation. So there's a 13 foot high penthouse. Uh, and then the elevator extension is what has gotten uh, larger. So that is an additional uh, eight feet. We, at one point it was smaller, but at this point it is now eight feet, um, a little bit under eight feet above that roof. So this is an eight foot extension. That's the only it. additional height. Uh -huh. Okay, it's not crystal clear to me still, but I'll work on it. Um, okay, um, I guess, let me just see if I had any others. Um, yeah, just one thing on the signage. Um, so what you're saying is the signage that you're proposing is precisely what is there today. Is that what correct? That's correct. That's In terms correct. of size and placement on this. These are, these are, these are actual photographs. Uh -huh. And how big is the signage that identifies this as the battery matter of time building? And where is that placed? I can't remember, but the governor's island ferry and the you know the fact that this is a ferry building, how do people, the public know that? Um, the, so the, the governor, if I go back to the front elevation here, um, there, there, um, I think this is a little bit of an older drawing or photograph rather. I think they, they have added some signage above their waiting room, which is on, uh, between slip six and seven. That is within the governor, the trust for governor's island purview and not a part of this project. Right. So, well, I would say that I would think that this, this, that the Cipriani sign should in no way be larger than a sign that identifies this as a place where the public goes to take the ferry. Uh, you know, arguably it's original and best use of this building. So I think that's something that, you know, I would ask that this committee cons considers as part of its resolution in terms of the scale of the lettering of, of Cipriani that the governor's island lettering somehow becomes its size with the same type of lighting. It looks like it's lit. Is the Cipriani lit now or is it just? The Cipriani sign is lit. And and is currently lit. It's currently lit. Uh -huh. yeah. And I do not believe that the governor's island sign is. Well, that, that to me, that's a concern. Um, you know, the, 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 the branding of this building is the Cipriani, Casa Cipriani, as some of you that I've talked to before on this project know is to me something we have to be very careful about, much like the South Street Seaport being branded, Howard Hughes South Street Seaport, all, all of these kinds of concerns are fair game to just be, be recognized and, and considered as we write this resolution. I'm done, Jason, believe it or not. And thank you all, it's a terrific presentation, thanks. Okay, I want to just ask a follow up question to clarify Alice's question about the bulkheads. The only height that's being added to this building is to add the height needed to take the elevator up to the existing bulkhead. Correct. Okay, up to the existing roof. Got you. So the only roof that's being hired, I'm not trying to minimize it, but are the areas where there are elevators in these little pop ups. The rest is the same roof line, although it's no longer a roof in some places. We understand that, right? That's Correct. The height is the same, but the footprint has shrunk. Okay, fine for me. And then I'm all into Alice's comment about, uh, you know, not having Cipriani's brand up, you know, in any way kind of dwarf the entrance to the thing. So whether that's by making the other guy's thing bigger or reducing yours, we may just kind of leave that up to you in the resolution if everybody agrees. Who's next? One, one thing that I'll say is the, the original approval uh, provided for an enormous sign on the, um, on the western portion of the building. Um, we have, actually you can see right, well, right over there. Uh, on the right side of that picture, we have uh, taken that criticism and we have removed that sign. Um, it, it, it will be removed from the plans entirely. Um, I, I, I can't speak to what TGI does with their space. Um, they, their space is not actually within our leasehold, so we have no say over it. Uh, obviously, we are supportive of uh, TGI announcing their space and, and uh, directing their, their customers accordingly. Um, but that sign is the BMB sign. That is the name of the building, the battery. No, that, well, building. Not no, that's just, 
So a that, that is a rendering that that uh, the approval is for branded signing uh, signage there. Well, right. We the 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 approval was not uh, conditioned upon the actual text and signage, but just the area, um, and that was originally conceived of uh, once Cipriani came on board as a Cipriani sign, which then was removed. Um, if, if you can um, allow me, just Jason, just could you just pull up that one section that you just flew by there that shows the actual sort of uh, narrowing of the mechanicals and the height, you know, extension. There was a section that you had up a minute ago. Uh, the the diagram section. Yeah, the diagram exactly. There you go. Yep. So it so there you see. It went from a six floor pergola height. It goes up like the 19 feet. Only, well, only at the elevators, though, Alice. That's a section that's only happening twice along that whole. Yeah, thing. I suppose in some ways it's misleading. This yeah, you need to show other, this section only occurs where the elevator bulkheads uh, are. Okay, well, that is mis. I could not figure that out. But now we get it, right, Alice? I'm getting there. Thank okay. you. Yep. Who else wants to ask a question or say something on the board? Just I, I want to um, add Gerald. to Alice's comments there regarding the signage. And one question I have is, where did the um, when when was the uh, canopy added, and when when who who what what approval was required to get the canopy over uh, Cipriani? Uh, the canopy on along South Street, this one here. Yes, correct. Um, that that was a part of the original uh, set of approvals through Landmarks, SHPO, NPS, and CB1 uh, to add that uh, canopy. But as as I said, the signage there was originally along just the edge. Um, if I scroll back, without making people too dizzy here. Um, originally, the, the signage was um, approved for as a location as just on the leading edge of of the awning and not on the top of it. Right, and and so this this signage that we're seeing now came about by what approvals or or when? Um, it, there was a temporary. Uh, it was approved for a temporary installation. They needed signage when they were originally opening, which is, you know, during the pandemic and, uh, you know, as hot rushes uh, happen when projects are being completed and they're looking to be open, it was just a temporary approval. Um, but it's now outlived that uh, time frame, and we were seeking permanent approval. Well, I do think that um, going again, going back to uh, the comments that were made earlier that the governor's island um signage is uh it's black it's about half the size it's also mounted directly to the um above the doors to the face of the building and and i'm uh i'm not a fan of of uh having the signage so pronounced um i can understand i guess the canopy uh and and having it mounted directly to the canopy because that would that would um be similar to what what is on the rest of the building, but um, that's all I'll say. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Who uh, else? That's you. Yeah. So, uh, Roger, I don't know if Roger's still on. Roger and I were involved yeah, okay. in, in every um, every step, uh, every station of the cross in terms of this approval process over the many years. Um, first of all, I want to applaud you for the thoroughness of your presentation. Second of all, I want to say that I've respected Jonathan's work, what, for two and a half decades at least. But Alice was, Alice's remarks were incredibly enlightening and reasonably stated um, because I would be more um, emphatic on the same issues. Originally, I did not vote for the extensions. LPC approved it. Be that as it may, I think the final, um, the final build out was um, was worked out very well. I like the glass extensions that you're going to include. It sort of finishes the building. It should be well known that the original 
approval way back when included lots of public space, included a food court, included places for the general public to sit down to utilize, calling Cipriani the steward of this one of the most magnificent individually landmark buildings in our district is a bit of a stretch. I mean, there was a lot of word salad in your presentation, even though it was a good presentation. Uh, there, I've been to I've been to the club on a number of occasions. I was practically assaulted, even though I mean, just this side of assaulted in getting in, even though I was, you know, I was invited and I've been with club members there. So if you think there is any public usage whatsoever, it's actually the opposite. You you will be you will be um, treated not well if you try to enter that building. I, um, I, I that's would, my experience. I so. would I would love to respond to that. There there is a. I, I apologize that you had that experience. That that is certainly not what we are hoping for. Um, the the building still does have a robust public access and uh, and public programming plan. Um, I'm not sure when you came to the building, what is but that? what is that plan? That's robust. Not not we, only plan, but robust plan. Talking about uh, we we have been working uh, collaboratively with with Alice and Tammy and and the executive leadership of, of the community board. Uh, over the last few weeks to uh, to present the plan. We've, we've shared a presentation. Uh, we expect that we will come back to present to the full community board once the once the full plan has been implemented. But the public spaces have uh, very recently been completed and have been fit out. Uh, we are pleased to announce that we've actually just been able to onboard a full time cultural coordinator who will be the public face leading the public access and programming initiatives at the BMB. Um, so I, I look forward to sharing uh, at, at our next opportunity, uh, probably uh, either the next uh, full community board or, or the following one, a full presentation on the full scope of the uh, the public uses and public programming at the building. So um, since we are the community board and not the LPC, will these will these public amenities in a, what was designed, constructed, and utilized as a very public building for most of its existence be presented to us before we are expected to approve this? I'm sorry, I didn't follow the question. It, will what be presented? The the public, the public, the plan for public, the, the plan for the public space. I prefaced it by saying that for most of its existence, this building was very, very public. Um, and now most of it has been privatized. Um, no. And I and I'm asking you if the public usage that you're working on with Alice and Tammy will be presented to us before the full board has to vote on this um, on this landmarks um, issue. Um, the the presentation that we shared uh, is, is certainly available to the rest of the community board. I don't think that we will. We would like our cultural coordinator to uh, to be fully up to speed and be the one presenting. Uh, so we we anticipate that'll probably be in October when we come. Uh, so no, not ahead of the full vote, um, but happy to share that presentation with you that outlines the plans for public access. Um, one one okay. thing I'd, I'd mentioned, I, I had this conversation with Alice as well. The, the building was publicly accessible until the 1940s. Uh, but after, from the 1940s through today, had it was for military. Yes, I know. yes. It, it had no public access, and and frankly, I mean, I worked for EDC before this development team uh, took over. It, it you didn't want to be inside. It was it was dangerous, um, missing That's stairways and and, and things really of that nature. No, uh, so so my other points. Thank you. My other points are that, like I said, under normal circumstances, I would not only vote for most of what you proposed, but applauded. However, way, wayfinding in this building has always been bad. It's interesting that Cassis Cipriani screams at itself, and yet by any approach, including vehicular, it doesn't guide you to the entrance. It's almost like a boast, because actually getting to that entrance or the ferry entrance is very, very difficult and confusing. Secondly, I could not vote for this if that red boast on the south this the the water side of this building announces itself more beautifully than any other building on the south side of the waterfront downtown including uh, the Howard Hughes corporation 
Now you're saying you want to embrace the riverfront by adding gaudy red lights and arch illumination and that awful red, uh, that awful red umbrella thing. I don't know what you were talking about boat features by some random developer in this incredibly historic building that has been tailored over many, many years. I can't vote for that. Everything else I would, <laughs> I would accept. So those are, those are my opinions, except I do want to point out to the board that if you've never seen this building from the water side, it's astonishing. And now apparently there's going to be a red I don't know why you want to be so welcoming when no one is welcome in the building. Why even bother on, on that side? So those are my remarks. Thank you. I, I pre I'll just respond to two of those things very quickly, but I appreciate your comment. Can you do it uh, while putting up the picture with the red canopies that, that we don't, that, that now I think I want to see again, please? Yeah, Thank well, you. one of the things I was going to say is those that, that red furniture and the canopy, that is, it's just a rendering for reference only. Uh, we're, we're, this is removable furniture. It's not going to be this color. It's not going to be exactly this. Uh, I can't say the same for the red light, which is not meant to be garish, but um and the other thing that i'll respond to is just the wayfinding and and this is uh something that you'll see in the public access deck that we have a, a rather uh we have a wayfinding plan that we will share with you um it has been thought about and it has been developed um so i look forward to sharing that with the full community board hi jason can i say something yes go for it roger um <clears throat> i agree with bruce we i mean we've been working on this building for 20 years um it's been a challenging building because once the uh, EDC restoration was done, uh, it sat there empty for a very long time. So I do think we need to recognize that Cipriani have, as they've done with a lot of other historic buildings, uh, done a tremendous job on, on, on restoration and improvement and brought life back to historic buildings that have no life. You compare this with, you know, PRA, uh, which had a similar uh, massive amount of, of public investment and and turned into, you know, a Palacus bar and now it's closed down. So, I mean, I do think we need to weigh in the fact that Cipriani are, are a good neighbor in the context of, of, of standing by their investments. Um, I do agree with the comment about the, the signage. It just doesn't seem to be necessary at that scale uh, for the reasons everyone said. Um, I also think it's important for us to understand what the public access is. Uh, I'm, I'm, I must admit, I do not understand it. And I think it, it would help us better approve this if the applicant were to share what that plan is. Um, you know, forgive us for being a little bit skeptical in you not sharing that with us on the grounds that it may not be what we like, but I, I think it would be more productive for us to see that uh, as uh, and and move ahead with with approving this subject to, you know, particularly for me, the signage uh, issue. <clears throat> Thank you. I mean, I can give you the, the you know, quick shots of, of what public access will look like. Um, but for, for most of the year, the building uh, will be open for uh, guided historic tours. Um, we will set aside space for cultural, or, uh, cultural uh, organizations and other nonprofits that want to come in and activate the space and put on uh programming within the space they'll be able to do that free of charge uh there'll be a calendar of of events that the public can come to and and see so we we are planning on uh on using this space and uh, the event space in particular as um as one that is used not only to uh to house public uh, not only to house uh, private events but also public events um and and we are working with uh the executive staff of the community board to talk through what sort of programming we are interested in seeing and that's exactly why we've hired, hired this cultural coordinator to uh, to be the point person for these groups to come in and say okay i want this space for this public event uh on this day and uh we we are hopeful that it'll be a real community benefit yeah um so I, I think thank you for that i mean and that's not unreasonable i mean um uh and so for me i i i think that is a a perfectly justified use of 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 access to the public um that's true for so many buildings that become private so uh, so for me the reservation is the um signage only thank you well if uh jason if i could just say because i have been privy to these discussions about the you know trying to find a, a kernel of public space in this pretty much you know monument to privatization forgive me but i really do see it this way um you know it is not a substantial amount of state i think matt is on the um 
uh, at this meeting, but he might be able to tell you the square footage. But there's, you know, it isn't like you're going to be walking in here anytime you want and get a cup of coffee anytime you want in some beautiful, glorious space as you might have done had the hotel area been open. I mean, I think we have to understand what really is being provided to the public. I'm not saying that there is nothing, but I think it's a good point that you both have raised to fully understand that. So perhaps that presentation, maybe you mentioned this, Max, could be sent around so these members could see exactly what you know spaces are being available and when. But um, it's certainly not like it's, I, 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 I don't know how to put it, but it isn't, an immense amount of space that's always going to be available to the public to come and go. There will be a sense of cultural activities that will be identified and certain, as they're saying, not for profit groups that can use it and sign up for it, including, I think, the community board at times. But um, it's very different than just walking into the ferry building as we see it today. And I just, I think, it, in fairness, it, it should be something that's made clear. I'm not saying you shouldn't support this. I just think it should be made clear. And I also would like to say in this resolution, if this committee is willing, but I would ask that you consider that we write very clearly our position on the privatization of this building and the hope that in the future, there could be some of this space that we're now maybe potentially approving on the roof, like the pool and the walkways and all this wonderful stuff that is going to be open to the public, much as we had hoped on the roof of the neighboring Pier 17. And I'll leave it at that again, thanks. I'm 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 happy to uh, share that deck, uh, or Alice, you have the deck. I'm, I'm fine with you sharing it. Um, we we didn't include it as part of this presentation because we viewed it as sort of outside of the purview of of reviewing and approving architectural elements. Um, but frankly, we're um, for for a you know a building that required a tremendous amount of, of private investment. And as a result, needs a a good amount of private revenue coming in to support it, so that it doesn't fall by the way, you know, the way that Pier A has or, or other um, historic buildings. Um, frankly, we're, we're fairly proud of our rather robust, or what we consider to be robust public engagement and public programming for this building. Um, and it, I, I apologize if it doesn't meet your, your expectations. It, it is, we are really trying to do right uh, by the public. And um, just so everyone knows, I, I, uh, I spent five years working at EDC uh, fighting for very aggressive language to to enshrine these uh, these uh, public benefits in this building that I have every uh, intention of uh, living up to now that I'm on this side of the deal. Um, so I, I I understand if you uh, think it should be more, and we're willing to have those conversations with you. But I I do want to say that we are are fully committed to um, opening this building up to the public in a way that works for everyone. Can I suggest that you that we get that proposal at least before the full board vote? Uh, uh, to me, it's integral to the work that we have done for 15 years or 20 years over this building. And also, I am surprised that something of this magnitude, you've only been dealing with two people on the community board. There has not been a committee in terms of public usage or anything. I mean, how does, let's say, a dock worker working the ferry after his work come into the building and enjoy himself or herself. Is there a space for that? That's what I mean by the public. There is, there is, there is a lounge that'll be open to the public for uh, food and beverage. All of this, the, the, the reason that we're not coming to you with this today is because this entire public access regime was negotiated with the community board uh, years ago and was, um, and was memorialized in our obligations to EDC and the city. Um, so, uh, all that to say, yes, we will happily share the deck. Um, I, I would maybe, uh, the only reason I would ask Alice to send it is she has everyone's email address and also I'm currently in COVID quarantine, so I don't have access to all of my files. Uh, but you should absolutely see it because it is going to be an ongoing conversation. Um, we are looking to the community board, um, for, um, for guidance and, uh, and help in identifying uh, cultural organizations that would that would uh, best utilize the space for the community. We fully intend for this to be a long term partnership and dialogue to uh, to activate the space in a meaningful way. So yes, you can absolutely see the deck before the full vote. We'll we'll get it to you as soon as possible. 
Um, Max, sorry, I'm sorry about your COVID situation. I actually I'm having a hard time pulling it up. I'm, I know Lucian will have it, but maybe if Matt, you're on, you could just send it around again, and we'll forward it around. I'm here. I'll, um, this is Matt Vigiano. Um, I will send that uh, to you, Tammy, and Lucian for forwarding to the rest of the committee. And Matt, while you're there, can you just tell the, just tell us all, you know, just about how much square footage is going to be open to the public, and it, and that that area that you're talking about where you can have a drink and all, is that something like can you give people an idea or it might be helpful? But we can, I guess, we can just wait. Does that presentation have drawings in it? I can't remember. It it does. Okay. Um, it the so the the lounge space which will have a bar and food available and place for you to kind of sit down. No purchase necessary, just to lounge and, and see the building. That'll be, I believe, about twenty seven hundred and fifty square feet. Um, the the so entire um, uh, the entire great hall, so the entire second floor that is used for event space, is about twenty thousand square feet. Um, that space will is, is subdivided into three areas: the hall floor, which is about nine thousand, and then you have the loggia, north concourse, and then the western concourse. Uh, those areas will also be available to uh, these uh, cultural organizations for uh, art shows, for lecture series, for movie screenings, for you know whatever you. These are whatever. paid events. These are the, that's the right. that's what we. Right, no, right, no, events. these are not paid events. Oh, these, these so are, you can are, use the Great Hall for free? I didn't realize that. Oh, I didn't got yes. that wrong. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, cultural organizations will have the opportunity to put on free events for the public. That that is the crux of what we are doing here. Well, there there will be there will be private events. This is a private public space. There will be private events that are not that are either not accessible to the public or that uh, will be uh, a ticketed event. Like there is the you know there is like art shows that may come and um, it'll be open to the public but on a ticketed basis. But the the intention here is the cultural coordinator will will will, will work with cultural organizations and local nonprofits and the community board to use the space free of charge, uh, not on a paid basis. I, I would just add on, on the architectural side of this throughout the process, um, Midtown Equities and Cipriani were very clear with us um, that the access had to be multi-dimensional enough that it could facilitate all kinds of different events, even happening simultaneously. So, you know, considering the idea that there may be public access in one part of the second floor event space and a private event in another, or um, that you might need different entries. So the, the building has been designed and facilitated to permit public access. Eddie. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, I, I enjoyed the presentation and I want to say that for me, the public use of it is irrelevant for what we're talking about now, which is the more architectural thing. So I look forward to your presentation in the future. If people want to opine about that in the future, I think that's great. I think it has nothing to do with what they're asking for tonight and I, I hope that it's not in this resolution. This resolution focuses on what they're asking for. As far as the signage, I agree with, it seems like everybody else before me. I don't, I know it's temporary. I would not agree with making what it exists now permanent. It should be a little bit more in agreement with what there is with Governor's Island. And I agree with what was, was okay in the past with putting the signage in front of the canopy versus on top of. It is rather jarring in its current location, but it's not. Anyway, I, I, I agree with the others. I, as far as the height of this roof, no problem because it's for an elevator and personally I require those. So I don't think people like me should be banned for all time from being able to go where everybody else is allowed to go, if, assuming you are allowed to go there. So I have no problem with the roof heights. As far as the red lighting on the uh, south side of the building, that is a disappointment. I think it's not complimentary at all, but Nevertheless, that's my comments on where I stand. So thank you. Eddie, what do you think about the lights on the sign being illuminated? Is that something you don't like? I don't have a real problem with that. Does anybody if, have a problem with that? Well, is, is, is the desire here just to see the governor's island space similarly uh, announced? If that's the case, we can certainly 
have a conversation with TGI about uh, putting similar signage on their portion of the building so that it is co-equal. Um, that, that is certainly a conversation that we are willing to have. Uh, we have a, a, a great longstanding relationship with TGI on capital projects and otherwise. Um, so please please let us know. And if, if that's what you're looking for, we're happy to facilitate. I, I think that the issue is b being consistent, um, that the signage, especially on the city side, should be consistent. Okay, we're, so we're, consistent we're happy to have that conversation with TGI um, and, um, and, and, and work towards that goal, certainly. Um, and and the last thing with that um, is is that the consistency as far as illumination of signage, I don't I don't necessarily have a problem with that. I think it does help to, um, you know, call attention to the the front. But freestanding, uh, hovering out over the sidewalk and and everything else just doesn't seem to, to fit this historic landmark very well. That that's it. Thanks. Okay, so I'm going to try and summarize. We don't like the temporary um, signage because it's, first of all, and we can add other adjectives, it's not complementary with the building's other major signage. We don't generally like the red lighting and think it detracts from the, the building in several ways uh, from the water views. Uh, we do we does anybody have anything else they want to say about the the, the changes to the bulk? which is also like a pretty big part of it. Is everybody okay with the changes of the bulk? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Um, did I forget any issues that besides the ones which Betty rightfully said is not part of this, you know, we're here to look at how it, how if it's appropriate or not. So if we wanna make it concise, our resolution, we may leave out a bunch of stuff about public access, but we could also just sidebar on that and hope make sure that, you know, the community's best interest is being taken care of by a group of people that, you know, you know, are watching over it besides the people on the landmarks committee. I, I it, because the point was to my point, I do want to just say that, you know, the history that um, has been brought to this by Bruce and Roger, I think it should be part of this resolution. There's a long history here long before we got here that should be, uh, identified and it was a public building and I don't agree that when you're asked to take away views and you're taking away airspace on a building for something bigger albeit eight feet and of course every elevator would be at fully accessible uh, regardless of its size um, it, it, it is a question that's fair to to I think be assumed in this committee but whether you do or not that's fine I do think however the history of this should be identified somewhat in the whereas clauses when you get to it. Uh, thanks. Let me find the resolution that was written however many years ago, and then I can cherry pick out some of the history in there. <clears throat> and if it's any history, I'll add some. Um, and then I think I'll also just in draft form try to, it's in not many whereases, pick up what you're saying and people really care about, which I share the view about the publicness of the space but i don't want to bog down the resolution on that item because it's just that's when the commissioners at lpc turn off it and they don't listen because it's not relevant to what they're trying to weigh in and unfortunately i'm not for it against it so i'll work on a draft did i capture everybody's general feeling so i can put something on paper that we can vote on uh at the full board no, nope. see, hearing no one saying no, then then I'm going to call it to question that we're going to approve of certain bulk modifications, and we have some objections about some specific design elements that we would like to see done differently. Mm -hmm. Jason, the only person that we lost was Megan, so are we ready? Do yes. we all object to the lighting, the red lighting on the riverside, or is it because I would like that included specifically uh, in the resolution? I think Betty said it. I, I agree with you guys. I think Roger said it, and nobody disagreed with us on that. So I would like to include it as well. Thank you. Please include it. Okay. Okay. So, so, uh, is everybody in favor? Everybody who's in favor? Anybody object? Uh... Any opposed? <laughs> opposed is the word. 
Anyone I'm, abstain? I'm going to abstain and probably vote for it at the full board meeting if, in fact, anyone else I'm is satisfied. <laughs> and any recusals? Motion carries. We have one more. We have two more items. Lucian Reynolds is going to talk about the budget and then we're going to go to Governor's Island. Lucian, are you with us? Thank you, Lucy. Uh, I'm going to make this really quick, everyone. Um, as you may know, uh, one of the pillars of responsibility of community boards is the city budget and commenting on the city budget. And it's that time of the year again where the community board will reflect on previous budget requests and set up for a uh, budget request for the upcoming fiscal year. We, we, we send that to city planning, city planning compiles them and delivers it to the city council. Um, and plus, we also can, you know, uh, ask that our uh, council member and borough president heed our request for the budget. Uh, we have some uh, uh, important items that uh, have been funded in previous years that we'll continue to support. But there's some other items that we've been requesting that have not yet received our support. There are also some new items that have yet not not yet even been discussed that will likely make their way onto this series of requests. So, um, I just want to show you how. Uh, we, we do this initial round this September. We are collecting information for October. The committees will be um, uh, uh, really um, whittling away uh, to get to what they really truly desire to be in this request. And uh, at the end of October in the executive committee, the committee will make the final determination. They'll vote as a resolution. Sorry, my kids are getting ready for bed in the back. And then uh, full board will ratify that resolution. So uh, I'm putting in the chat a link. This is the site that we use every year, budget.mcb1.nyc. Um, I'm going to share my screen so you can see um, how this system works. This is a custom system just for us. Um, it has a lot of great information. If you are new to uh, the budget, um, there's lots of uh, handy links about how the, the difference between the expense budget and the, uh, the capital budget. Um, there's uh, anything that uh, you may have a question on after reading this information, you're welcome to come to me and I will be happy to um, talk with you at length about it. There are two parts to this that are dynamic in that they're um, embedded uh, uh, views into our database where we track all of our budget items. So you'll see these are the requests that we made for fiscal year 23. Um, the, the request name, of course, uh, is a, a short uh, 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 snippet, but then we have a longer explanation. We have uh, uh, what agency uh, there it's it's aimed at, uh, whether it's capital or expense, uh, and then what OMB responded. Now we're still loading a little bit more information into this, but you'll see that a lot of these require further study. Um, but you can you can actually go through and filter this uh, sort. So there's a lot of information that you can kind of take a look at. Based on what you see, if there's something that isn't in there that you think is important, I would encourage you to keep scrolling down this page. You'll see that there's a web form. This will put a, a, a budget request directly in our database, which we will then uh, push through committee to be discussed. Uh, we'll, it'll go before the executive committee. So if you fill out this web form, you will have an item that's in the database. Um, so put your name in. I would really encourage you to put your name in. That way we can. Uh, go to you if there's any additional questions. Committee of origin for you all, you would go to uh, uh, landmarks and preservation. For the city agency, you know, I would definitely choose for you all LPC. But you can also make a, 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 a really for anything, but I'm just using landmarks as an example. You'll write your description of the request here, and then you have to just click this and this. This just makes sure that it fills in correctly. There's only one option here. Um, I would encourage you if it's location specific to hit that and then hit submit and then it's in and um, I appreciate any feedback for this um, for this page, but feel free to add as many as you as you would like, but just as long as they don't already exist uh, in our list of requests. Duplicates are kind of annoying. It's not the end of the world, but they're just annoying. Um, any questions before I let you go on to our last item? Sounds like you revolutionized the way of submitting this item for years going on. So thank you, Lucian, for that. Right? You no, thank, thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anybody? 
One second, Lucian, is there a way of editing? Um, editing will, if, if, I guess if you really want to edit something, um, then in that case, submit something that's similar and then, um, we'll have the 2 competing items come up uh, in committee for discussion. Great. Cause that's why I've done duplicates in the past. Thanks. Okay. Well, if there's no uh, questions, you all know how to find me. I will send an email about this. So you'll also get these links uh, and resources in your inbox. So keep an eye out for that for the full board. I'm going to try to talk to every committee about this, but thank you all for all your, for your time and for your uh, dedication to the district. And uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you. I'm going to change my vote. I'm sorry. And I'm going to change it because I don't want to be the 1 outlier in the committee since. I don't think all... we could change it after you voted. Okay. I'll, I'll do it at the full board. It's okay. Thanks. Bye everyone. Thank you, Lucian. Okay, what is next, Lucy? Um, Governor Zyla Nicole, I gave the present the um control. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Nicole. Thank you. Um, I'm also joined by um some colleagues here. If you could also let them in to be panelists, that's Chris Tepper, uh, Will Johnson, Brian Order, and Mai Shimizu. While Lucy so, lets them in, what I what will, is the topic? Sure, yeah. Uh, my name is Nicole DeFeo. I am the Director of Design and Construction with the Trust for Governors Island. And tonight um, we are presenting before you an application before LPC for exterior site lighting in the historic district um, and Governors Island. And so I'll go ahead and I think everyone is in here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share my screen, the brief presentation. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, so again, I'm joined by my colleagues, uh, Chris Tepper, the chief um, development officer at the trust, Will Johnson, vice president of design and construction, Brian Order, a principal of Bold, the lighting uh, design consultant, um, and Mai Shimizu, who's also from Bold. And so I'll turn it over to Chris to do introductions. Um, thank you, Nicole, and um, good evening, everyone, and thanks for hanging in there. Hopefully, um, we're last but not least. Um, we have just two uh, kind of introductory slides, and then I'll turn it back over. But of course, I think most of the community board knows, and if, if Alice is still on, she's on our board, um, that we were thrilled last year to um, uh, get additional funds from the city so that we could be open to the general public 365 days a year as well as um, as of this spring be open much later into the evening. Um, you know, one of the kind of last challenges, uh, if um, you've come out to enjoy Swasson summer sunset at Swasson's, which is our um, uh, uh, ability for the public to stay on the island um, late most nights this summer, it's been really limited to the North ferry landing area where LMCC and, and Island Oyster and, and Taco Vista are. and and. Primarily, that's because much of the historic district um, does not have adequate lighting to keep the public there at night. There's only a limited area of, of lighting, and that's something um, that we'll, we'll show with photos and, and what we're trying to solve here tonight. Um, Nicole, if you go to the next photo, or the next slide, I'm sorry. Um, one of the things uh, that, you know, I know that this committee uh, in particular, but the community board at large and many of us care about is um, how do we uh, continue to invest in reactivate and retenant um, our historic district where we have um, over 50 uh, historic uh, buildings um, uh, in our landmark district um, and are actively trying to renovate, preserve and retenant them um, so that they all have stewards. Um, this map here is uh, just highlighting um, are the progress and where we are uh, in actively trying to find appropriate tenants for those spaces that, that meet with our mission. All of the blue buildings are ones that are currently occupied. Um, that's the LMCC, uh, our offices, the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council. Um, Building 107 has a lot of the small tenants that have their logos on the bottom. Um, the day spa, of course, 
um, the Harbor School High School, which we're very excited to be working with on a much larger expansion um, that will take over Building 555 and have a new construction wing, um, as well as um, a new multi-tenant office project for green and blue tech companies called Buttermilk Labs in Building 301. Um, many of the green buildings are ones that are subject to or part of open solicitations. So our climate center, our search for a university anchor for the South Island, where we really encourage them to also include uh, adaptive reuse as part of the campus proposals. Um, Nolan Park, where we're actively using those today for arts and cultural tenants and have just broken ground on 20 Nolan um, as the first full gut renovation of one of those beautiful um, yellow wood clabbered homes and we'll be moving on to 19 Nolan next year. Um, but we'll continue to keep them activated um, at least seasonally as much as we can. And then we have an open solicitation for buildings 140, the Admiral's House, buildings 2, 3, and 25 to try to attract um, year round amenities to support the cultural campus and the island at large. That's in addition to all of the infrastructure work we've been doing. If you come out to the island now, you'll actually see in the historic district us um, working on new sanitary sewer lines all across the historic district. Those are getting um, uh, we're putting in new sanitary sewer mains. The potable water was done previously. We've just put in new fire suppression and fire hydrants for the full historic district. Um, electrical feeders are in process as long as new along with new transformers. Um, and really the, the lighting in the public realm is one of the last kind of major investments that's still needed to um, support the complete reactivation of, of the historic district. Um, Nicole, and with that, I'll, I'll turn over um, uh, the presentation to my colleague, Nicole. Um, so to look at existing lighting conditions within the historic district, these are a couple of images. Um, the largest image on the left is looking at Nolan Park, um, which is a prime public access area. Um, that Chris just reviewed that we um, have programming in every summer. This is a photo of Nolan Park at dusk. You can see um, that there is no light available um, at night. On the top right is an image on, from taken from the parade grounds where we host movie nights in the summer. Um, this is looking south towards the South Battery. Again, you can see there's no light here in this critical uh, public access area. When we do host movie nights, um, we use generator powered uh, light poles, similar to what NYPD uses on the streets and things like that. Um, the image on the bottom right was taken from a ferry um, and shows the contrast between the lighting in the relatively new park on the South Island um, and the adjacent park space to the right and shows a lack of perimeter lighting as well on the island. Oops, sorry. Um, so this is these are some images of what the existing lighting looks like on the island. Um, it is all uh, defunct uh, Coast Guard era lighting. Um, you can see from these images that there's a variety of light post types and fixtures um, throughout the island. The first image is some lighting that's in a parking area on the southern side of Liggett Hall. Um, between uh, section just east of section O. The second image here is some of the light posts that we find in Nolan Park that had to be retrofitted with a solar powered um, light um, because the existing light posts do not work. Um, the third image is kind of a typical a street light fixture that you, you find at the perimeter, um, which is also not working. These do not light up at night. And then the last image is a picture of the West 8 lighting um, that was approved by LPC and installed not only in the new park, but also in um, some sections of the historic district. And that's the only uh, functional lighting that we have in the historic district. Um, this is a plan showing all of the existing lighting um, in the historic district. Again, if you can see my cursor, Division Road uh, comes here. So this is the southern uh, boundary of the North Island Historic District here. Those West State lights that were approved um, by LPC in 2012 are represented by red dots here on this map. So you can see sort of how they extend from the park below um, into the historic district. And then all of the blue dots represent that kind of um, mishmash of U.S. Coast Guard era lighting um, that is a variety of lighting types and is all uh, in disrepair and does not work for us anymore. 
Um, so the goal of this design proposal is to unify the lighting type in the historic district um, and to make it more efficient and use less light um, to provide a safe passage for vehicles and pedestrians. This is the proposed lighting plan in the historic district. Um, all of these red dots represent a single uh, light post with a street light fixture, 16 feet above grade. We'll see more uh, images of what that looks like later in the presentation. And then these green dots uh, represent areas. Um, they typically border areas where there'd be public gathering um, or large open spaces that have a combination of a what we're calling a moonlight at the top of the post to provide some ambient lighting. Um, this lighting design was uh, inspired by the exterior lighting that we see at Brooklyn Bridge Park. Um, and I'll turn it over to Brian to go into more detail. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes, Brian. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Brian. I'm the lighting designer on the project. Um, I'm a preservationist at heart, very much so. And I think um, our, one of our overall goals here, uh, we have a really great advantage of this property is in, in this project is that a little light can go a very long way. Unlike the island, unlike Manhattan, we don't have a lot to compete with. So we can stretch the lighting really far so that when you're approaching it from the city um, and even above, um, it looks historic, right? So it, it it has that feel, that transition of a calming nature, but mo mostly so that you can kind of peek back into time and imagine what it would have been like when it was built. Um, so we have very low levels, and I think um, one of the important features of this is if you look over on the right, that's our perimeter, our low level perimeter lighting. The post is a southern yellow pine. You would all be familiar with those because they were the original telegraph um, poles. There's still a lot around the city. They're used all up and down the uh, New England and the Northeast Corridor. Um, they're very traditional and they last forever and ever and ever. And they're also very flexible and they kind of blend with the environment. You go to the next one. Um, so this is the moonlighting effect. So we have a low level light that gives us that's very stretched apart. And then we have a moonlighting effect similar to Brooklyn Bridge, but we've improved upon it. Both the technology has improved and our use of it is a lot more subtle because the Brooklyn Bridge, there's, you know, we do have some things to compete with over there. Um, but here we can be a little bit more subtle about it and a little bit more controlled. Um, so we decided to go a little high to spread light instead of putting a lot of little posts around. We can go really high and spread it out really far so it comes through the trees and gives that nice dappled look. Again, on the same southern yellow pine, yellow pine uh, post. Go to the next one. Uh, the only deviation from that is at the piers. We go with um, a taller post with four lights high. So we have, you'll see there are basically only three in the vocabulary here. Um, we've got our perimeter light, which is low level. We've got a combination, which is low and high. And then we've got the masthead, which is kind of a nautical look. Um, and, that, uh, and that goes for just the three arrival points. These are the, the three types that we have. Um, we have the one on the left low level, the one in the middle, which is kind of the moonlighting effect, and then the mast light for the piers. And uh, stop me if you have any questions. Um, we can go next. So here is where we did the mock-up. Um, so on the left is the moonlighting effect, and on the right is the sort of walking effect. Um, and you'll see when we get to the, to the next slide, we stretch them really far. So this is one post in our mock-up. Again, we just want to show you what that what that yellow pine looks like. It looks even this is brand new. They tend to look really better when they're aged. They last forever. So this is what it looks like. It's actually not as bright as this in real life. Um, you're seeing it, you know, through a, a photograph. It has a really subtle look to it. Um, and if you go to the next one, it's a really good image of. Oh, that's yeah. So oh, this is important to note. We reduced actually. We had. Originally, during the mock up, we had two lights on the uh, on the top of the post to do the moonlighting, but we figured out during, during the mock ups and some calculations that we can get away, away with one again, reinforcing our idea that less is more it really goes a long way. Um, and then the next one. Um, so, I think that's just showing our perimeter light, which goes around the entire island. It's really important here to note that we tried to again, stretch them as far as possible, hide them within the existing vocabulary of trees. 
there's a nice thing about the Pine as well in that we can organize a lot of the other things that may show up like Wi-Fi, security, and any other technology that comes up so we don't have to keep putting poles up everywhere. Um, the, the Pine pole can really um, accommodate almost all of that. And this is how far they're stretched 160 feet apart. That's as far as we can get them. So there's a little bit of a dip in between as you're walking through, and then it picks you right up um, as you're getting just about right through that dip. So we stretched them really far. You're seeing a scissor lift on the left only because that's, we were tinkering with the height and that's the 16 foot height. Here's the mast, super simple. You've seen them before. I don't, I don't know if that requires, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's a little bit grander and we wanted it to be. We also didn't want to end up with a lot of street lights. So we're trying to get away with just one fixture, just kind of like in the old days, there would be a mass light with lanterns on it. Um, you wouldn't have tons of, of lights in a place like this. And these would also replace, we do have existing mass lights in these locations. So this would also unify that lighting in the historic district. <clears throat> Pier 101. Oh, there's another one. Okay. Yep. And then uh, Yankee. So this is what, you know, this is the, what it looks like. Instead of using that modern pole, we're going to use the Southern yellow pine and it gets mounted right to the pole. Here's, you know, what it would look like. We're instead of using the two lights on the top, we're only using one. So it's just going to be one low, one high. Important to note, if you go back, it shows both poles, uh, both lights. Important to note, we wanted a sort of more traditional looking pole for the bottom. That's the one you're going to see most. It's bug rated, which is backlight, uplight, and glare. It's, um, it's, it's the best it can be regarding that. It has dark sky compliance. It's respectful for um, migratory birds. Um, it cuts off before it reaches the water line. Um, and it has very little to no glare as you're approaching it. Um, same with the top. In order to get the performance out of the top and to get it as slim as possible, we went with a slightly different look, but that's going to really disappear in the height. The, the, you know, you're really going to notice the pole more than the lights and the lights are black. And then at night, you're not going to notice the lights at all, but you'll notice the, the illumination. Um, and that's the, yeah, that's the pole. Can't be any more. I mean, that's the original, you know, we've been using those for a couple hundred years now. I think that's the last slide, right, Nicole? Yes, that's the last one. Great. All right, thank you, guys. Um, I'll go first. Uh, I like it. And then I'm going to ask anybody else who wants to speak on it. Oh, uh, every old, this will be a uniform plan. There will no longer be, everything will be as per this presentation in terms of lamps on the island. Is that right? You'll take yes. out all the old stuff. Within the that's historic great. district. And yes, we'll be demoing out all the um, legacy, uh, mostly non-working poles. Then, so, yeah, the island will just have those West state lights in the park and then at the perimeter will be this condition and then some of those combination posts in the historic district. Okay, and another, who wants to go next? An, a, another thing that's kind of really great about this is 50 years from now, your successors will just be discussing the fixture head and not the pole. Um, hi, um, that was a nice presentation. Um, I, I've been on the board of. Uh, LMCC for a long time, and I remember when we were like an outpost on <laughs> Governor's Island, and now it keeps getting more and more used, which is wonderful, and access is much easier. My only, well, I have two concerns. First of all, I, I love the design. Second of all, I'm very familiar with Brooklyn Bridge Park lighting, um, uh, and I was even walking the abandoned piers with Van Valkenburg before it was designed. Uh, however, there is something that it's it's inevitable. There was a wonderful feeling of openness and in situ preservation on the island as recently as two years ago. And that is gradually and I guess inevitably being regularized, um, um, made uniform, uh, made more um, urbanized in its way. And that does concern me. Not everything needs to be touched all the time. Secondly, I'm very concerned about the lumens, and I would like to know what the lumens will be. For instance, when the city, and I know this is not DOT, designed, for instance, the reconstruction of Worth Street, the last thing that happened 
was the actual bulbs, the actual illumination, which we didn't have a handle on. And it is, there are standards depending upon the height of buildings on either side of the street, et cetera. And the light is so bright that it's, it, it's day for night. So I would like to know the degree, the actual degree of illumination we are talking about. How much brighter will that place be at night? So there's a, a great advantage. Uh, the quick answer is uh, the an average of one foot candle. So you're going to get a lot less than one foot candle in between posts. Um, the, the slightly longer answer to that is we can do that because we have a massive advantage to letting your eyes adjust. So it's still a very safe amount of light. It meets code, which is important, um, but it's a very safe amount of light that we can get away with because we're not competing with a lot of other things like other street lights, signage, storefronts, and things like that. So we don't have to boost the lighting anymore. So when you approach the island, it'll feel very quiet and it'll feel almost almost dark until your eyes adjust. It's called adaptation compensation and your eyes will adjust and it will feel um, much more comfortable, but it will never feel bright. And it won't feel bright. It won't be day. It will be nighttime at night. In That's the key to the moonlighting, right? So I think Brooklyn Bridge Park is a little bright, even though a lot of the fixtures are sort of dying out now. Those are really great fixtures and, and, and they're actually easy to service. I still feel Brooklyn Bridge in certain in certain areas is a little bit bright. It'll feel more like the um, like the Esplanade portion of it um, rather than the park, right? So it it has a real subtle romantic quality to it. But so the, if someone is looking up at the lights and they don't have a cataract, will there be there? If you're okay, so that's the hardest thing for a lighting designer, right? If you are directly under the light fixture and look directly into it, it's not going to feel glary. It's just going to feel bright because it's a shielded source. If you are looking up at the light from, let's say, halfway between them, you wouldn't feel any glare whatsoever. But there's nothing you can do about, no matter how much you frost it, there's nothing you can do about looking straight up into a light fixture. Thank you. Yeah, I'm super sensitive to that. We also were able to actually reduce from the existing plan to the proposed, we were able to reduce the overall number of fixtures in the historic district by about, um, 18 or so. Um, so we are reducing the, the footprint of fixtures and then also spreading them out more so that they are lighting the spaces that we need to light in the existing lighting. We don't have any illumination around the parade ground. Um, so we're reallocating and redistributing the light in a way that makes more sense for how we use the historic district. I'll, I'll add one more thing, which is not that, I mean, we don't have residential on the island, but um, you know we do hope that um, some of the artists uh, and organizations that re inhabit um, and redevelop Nolan Park will have some year round residencies. And we do now with the Institute for Public Architecture and Shandaken Projects in Building 9. And so when we did the mock ups uh, and the moonlighting that um, illuminates Nolan Park, um, that was one of the reasons we actually reduced or brought, took off one of the Cobra heads and the um, moonlighting was to. Um, you know, thinking about folks on the second and third floors there over time, what it would be, what their experience would be. Does anyone else have any other questions? Hold true for the art, does the same hold true for the artists and residents at LMCC? Yeah, actually, yeah. We, I mean, there's no overnighting there, but, um, but yes, I mean, I think, uh, uh, the same considerations were taken to people on the upper floors, I guess, was my point. But I think um, the, you know, the um, now that the ferry's running later and artists can stay later and work later, hopefully this um, generally, once this is built out, makes it all feel much more welcoming and safe to actually want to work in your studio at, in, in the evening. We actually removed um, due to the, the kind of unique street condition of build it, this is building um, 110 here where LMCC is um, and. Because there's really not a space between the building and this, there's kind of a funny sidewalk and an unused sort of parking lot area here in front of the building. We actually were able to eliminate a light post here. Um, according to our spacing, because we're going to rely on the sconces and entrances here to the building. Um, to provide some illumination on the street and it, it's a more open area. There's no trees here. So we try to be as sensitive as possible to the existing conditions to really minimize the light um, when possible. I was going to 
Mauricio. Does anyone else on the community board have any questions? Yeah, Jason, um, I yes. was actually hoping that this, this is Gerald. I was hoping somebody else were uh, some of the other board members would would chime in and, and or for, for some discussion. Um, so very nice presentation. Thank you. Um, I, I think it's it's very well articulated, especially with the, the plan showing the various lights and and um, and whatnot. Um, I, my, my only concern is the the the, the poles. Uh, the mounting poles. I, I understand that they're, you know, have a longevity. Um, I don't know how to say this, but the 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 feel just doesn't feel. <clears throat> I mean, is there anywhere else in the city that that these sort of yellow pine poles are are being used now? I, I mean, what I know these poles to be is more. Uh, you know the old telephone poles where you would see wires attached to everything and, and at, across the top um and to me it, it just doesn't feel doesn't exactly feel urban and it doesn't feel uh park like and it also doesn't feel uh rural even um it just feels old but not really old to the so the Victorian style, I mean, I, I don't know how else to say that. Um, and, and it almost kind of looks, um, I'm sorry, the only word that's coming to my mind is trashy. It just, it just looks really trashy. Uh, so what other, what other ideas were uh, bounced around regarding poles? So we looked at a lot of different types of poles. Um, we've gone through tons of searching on this, um, you know, uh, both on the Henry Hudson, there's some wooden poles on up on Henry Hudson um, when you're heading toward the bridge. Um, we looked at the Esplanade, we looked at lots of places in Brooklyn. Um, I grew up, I, well, I, I grew up in Brooklyn, but I spent uh, a lot of uh, my life on Grove Street and Barrow in that area back a long time ago when it was affordable. Um, and there used to be a precedent for a lot of these, particularly around the piers. And that was where we started taking our cues. And in fact, um, South Street Seaport, um, Canard lines, the West Side Highway had a lot of these, even back in the 90s, we still had a lot of these poking around. Um, th there's also a lot of them in Brooklyn and Queens um, and New England, and it was sort of the, the thing you would do because the telephone poles had already existed, uh, the telegraph poles as well, and then they converted them to lighting, and then they just started making them for lighting in general. Um, part of the reason that we really chose this is because in time with landscaping and age, you blend really well. And if you want to get a pole this tall, that's metal or fiberglass, it's going to end up with a really fat footprint, like three times the size of this. Um, so you end up with a much more present pole, and it winds up dominating the landscape. Um, and you, you know, they end up pretty being pretty beefy. The great advantage of this pole is most of it just goes down into the, or a third of it goes down into the ground. It doesn't need heavy. Um, uh, concrete mounting plates and bases and junction, you know, those giant junction boxes that you see at the bottom of, of streetlights. So it, it ended up being a much less massive looking structure. And so, so, but these are all going to be, if I understand correctly, these are all going to be fed from below anyway. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, so you're going to see a, uh, you're going to see some sort of uh, wire going up the pole. They just feel very temporary to me. Um, I, you know, I, I think that again, um, the lighting is well thought out and, and all the rest, but I, I, these just feel very temporary. Um, and I don't have a problem seeing bases. I think um, one of the other issues I have, if you go back to the other picture that was just up, they just, they don't ever seem to be straight. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's pr perspectives, but. Um, no, they're, they're all plumb. The, our yeah, our something paths like are a little bit crooked. <laughs> Yeah, the um, but no, they are the, the, they are plumb. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and sure I think the original their final installation. <laughs> if, if you can go back to the uh, what's existing on the island now, there were four um, photographs together, or four. Uh, I'll also four, say that's not posts. even exhaustive, though. I'm sure you have a comment. That's sure, specific. sure. Uh, but I mean, th this notion of of any types of uh, taller posts being three or four times larger, I, I, I just don't see it. I mean, uh, we have this this post, the 
uh, all of these are fairly fairly small. In fact, smaller than than what's there, including this very very tall one, the the third image uh, from the left uh, with the arc. Yeah, um, and and the one to the to the left seems even probably the most appropriate, if I if I may, for for the Victorian era uh, homes that uh, houses that are on there. Um, I, I, that's all I'm going to say. I, I just, I don't, I don't think that the polls are the right, um, vibe, but, uh, I would defer to, um, you know, I'd love to hear what others have to say about that. Thank you. I, I agree in the basicness of the polls, Gerald, that I think you're kind of talking about, and I'm hoping that in their use as light poles, when the lights are out and they're being lit, they'll, they'll blend away then. And because they're wood and they're going to patina, hopefully they'll blend away during the day too. That's my, and so, and therefore I'm not personally, I don't object to the light stanchions that they're going to apply to them. Uh, and I think since they'll all be consistent, that'll be nice. Um, so I hear you. I don't know if it's enough for me to not want to see them move forward with this proposal. I'd be interested to hear. Someone else before we close this thing out. Just to clarify, so those, the, the taller post that was in the mock-up, um, which is 35 feet above grade altogether, is only at these green locations. And then the rest of the red lights, except for the mass lights, of course, at the piers, are only 25 feet above grade and have a single uh, light fixture at 16 feet. So not every post is going to be as perceived to be as giant as the as. Just one, one. So this is this is the one this this assembly the single street light, this this rendered elevation is not um, scaled correctly, but um, this combination post only exists in those green locations. So it's really the the edge of the parade grounds. Um, the edge of Nolan Park, and there's two on Hay Road um, and Colonel's Row. And then the rest of the light, the rest of it is this condition, which is 25, a 25 foot tall post with one single fixture at 16 feet. And yellowish, not truth serum white, the actual color of the illumination. Uh <laughs> <laughs> no, this that's just diagrammatic. There's a, I like truth serum white. That's clever. Um, no, there's a warm for the pedestrian sort of lower one and a slightly more cool uh, moonlight effect um, to make it feel more natural um, for the higher for the uh, higher positions. So that's what you're seeing there is actually pretty close. I mean, there's some still some daylight in the air, but um, it's a pretty warm light. By the way, I think the poles are both rustic as is appropriate to Governor's Island and somewhat luxurious being in wood. That's my own personal opinion. I'll shut up now. And also just to clarify, the goal is the goal is very clearly not to have any loose wires on the pole. Um, the, the electrical wires will be in galvanized conduit running on the opposite side of the light fixtures to avoid them being illuminated as well. So in this image, you can see the, the conduit on the back of on what we're calling the back of the pole or opposite the path side. And in fact, that's very much um, we're cleaning up a version of how they did it um, in Brooklyn Bridge. Um, also, to note, this isn't necessarily in your. Oh, I mean, it is sort of. You have to think about the future as you do about the past. Um, I I think lighting is. I, I don't like that lighting gets ripped out every twenty five to fifty years. So I'm we're really trying to make something that a hundred years from now, when the technology updates. Um, there's still something historic because poles do have a tendency, as you see all over the place, they degrade, they rust out, um, they, they just kind of get battered. Um, these don't. These last as long as trees. Um, we have poles in New England that are, you know, 200 plus years old that are still used today. I'm, I'm going to reiterate, I don't, I, don't, I don't think rustic is, you know, there's nothing really rustic on the island as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the Victorian. Houses are Victorian houses. They're not rustic. Um, they look like, these look like dead trees to me. Oh, people. <laughs> I think Maddie has her hand up, though. I, I am very much in support of uh, the addition of lighting on the island. Uh, I, I don't feel these poles are appropriate. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is Betty. I want to say I disagree. I, I personally like what's being recommended for the polls. I think they will work well. I think it will improve as you get the aging and the patina. So I, I agree with Bruce on that. Uh, I think there's just so many practical reasons that also make me very in favor of what's being proposed. I thought it was well thought out. So thank you. Okay, anybody else? And then I'll try. Okay, so we're in favor of it. Uh, the most of us, so it would be a, a, a resolution to recommend that landmarks approve this plan and we'll list some of the practical that we care about it and like durability and uh, exchangeability of fixtures in the future and consistency. Um, and then uh, just I really, I think that the, even the design of these just light fixtures themselves doesn't really need a long story about why we like them. They're, they're consistent. They're not, uh, they don't stick out, right? They, they do in that picture they put up. I, I think they look the most like appropriate because I, I almost just got a list, a little like vision of, of a ship bow when you, when you did that kind of a gray night one before this one that you were up. So. That was even a, makes me feel like they're, yeah, like I just kind of see that as a fitting in yeah. shape. Um, you know, if it was one of the Bishop Crook on the historic district, there'd just be more elaborate light posts that kind of twirl back on each other there. So um, I'd like to write a, a, a positive resolution. And I hope uh, to call that to question, that would be great. Call the question. Uh, second. Second. Any opposed? Forsberg opposes. Okay. Any abstain? Any recusals? Motion carries. Okay. I'm going to draft out some, some resolutions and, and I'll get these out to everybody earlier than later so we can have some comments and be prepared for our full board meeting and uh uh lucy i'll help you help me get uh, bruce's old resolution for the maritime building and i know gerald's going to work and i'll help with him with luchin on some sort of recommendation for vault um vault monitoring program which i think is like just so great of an idea and we'll look into that and otherwise, I'll see everybody or some of you at this planning meeting and then the full board meeting. Is that okay? Everybody ready to go? Thanks, right. Jason. Have a good night, everyone. Bye, guys. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.